to the emerging customized fit for purpose education ecosystem that is designed for undisrupted learning. The concept of this new school is fluid and will remain as such until maybe a long term solution such as vaccine will be made available to combat the virus. What emerges from lessons learned from the COVID-19 outbreak is the need to explore the new normal for our schools. And that is what we are doing right now. We craft modules because we want to prepare ourselves for the new normal. You're all here, not by mere accident, but you are here because you are destined to be here as a writer, as an evaluator, and as an illustrator. You are considered as front liners of the Department of Education. This entails sacrifice, and I'd like to emphasize that heroes like you deserve our high respect and deep adulation. Therefore, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you. Thank you very much. Now is the time to shift our mindset. Make remote learning the default mode and the physical learning as the alternative. This way, we, we become better prepared psychologically. To my dear English writers, evaluators, and illustrators, heads up, and let us all say hello to the new normal. Once again, a pleasant morning to everyone, and may God bless us all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for challenging us. For the presentation of participants, please help me welcome our very own Head Teacher 3 of F. Bangoy National High School, Ma'am Jujane N. Hilbulingo. Thank you, Sir Mel. Good morning, everybody. For our webinar this morning, uh, I, uh, I am requesting all the participants to use the chat box on your uh, monitors to respond uh, as I call your names. Uh, we will not allow you, sorry, we will not allow you to use the microphone or it will create uh, so much uh, noise. So use the chat box as I call your names. So the distinct writers for grade seven here are the following. Uh, Sir Kenneth Baliena from Santa Ana National High School. Sarah Lane Amancio of Davao City National High School. Ma'am Ceci Ragol of Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School. Ma'am Marisol Herrera from Kalina National High School. Ma'am Jennifer Dayupai of Lower Tamugan National High School. Charme Dungog from Baguio, uh, NSAT. Norjana O. Amisali of Santa Ana National High School. Ma'am Gina Himaya S. Martinez from Davao City National High School. J. Ann Q. Atilio Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School. Ma'am Maria Cristina Santos, Santa Ana National High School. John Marquis D. Siasico of Davao City National High School. J. Mark N. Arellano from Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School. Uh, Jessa C. Lingat Lingatong from Lacson Integrated School. Sir Mark Hilby Restore from F. Bangoy National High School. And Ma'am May Donna T. Pastor from Governor Duterte National High School. For our grade eight writers, we have Ma'am Donna Christine Vilches of Davao City National High School. Ma'am Flora Mi C. Sarabillo of Davao City National High School. Ma'am Dina E. S. Habunita of Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School. Irene S. Akiatan of F. Bangoy National High School. Mary Grace P. Gamos of Crossing Bayabas National High School. Ma'am Beatrice Lariba of F. Bustamante National High School. Rowena D. Estrera of F. Bangoy National High School. Ma'am Lirio I. Laureano of A.L. Navarro National High School. Ma'am Mary Grace F. Padilla of F. Bangoy National High School. Ma'am Elenita C. Buston of Santa Ana National High School. Jacqueline C. Balakinto of F. Bangoy National High School. 
for our grade nine writers, we have uh, Sir Bonnie D. Paharillo Jr. of F. Bostamante National High School, Ma'am Shemi Keen Ombrezo of Davao City National High School, uh, Ma'am Ana Angelica Bautista of Santa Ana National High School, Ma'am Johanne Esparagoza of Crossing Bayabas National High School, Ma'am Juresi O. Simafranca from Mintal Comprehensive National High School. Our grade 10 writers are Oriel M. Estrera from Leon Garcia National High School, Rolindo B. Maniago of Davao City National High School, Ma Maricel B. Sumabot from Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Ma'am Duwani Rose Kataytay from Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Justine B. De Los Reyes of F. Bongoy National High School, Andrew T. Wee of F. Bongoy National High School, Sir Jonathan Balakinto of F. Bongoy National High School, Ma'am Pearl Namuag of Santa Ana National High School, Ma'am Jessamine R. Montes from Santa Ana National High School, Ma'am Charlene Gasset, Gasset of F. Bustamante National High School, Ma'am Mary Joy S. Remulta from Davao City National High School, and Ma'am Ann Georgette A. Bustamante of F. Ah, uh, sorry, of Davao City National High School. For our evaluators, we have Ma'am Aristine P. Dayot of Daniel, Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Sir Fasan Hasim of Davao City National High School. Uh, our grade 8 evaluator, Ma'am Sheila C. Alemania of Doña Carmen Denia National High School, Ma'am Maria Cecilia Palamba of Davao City National High School, for grade 9, we have Sir Ramil Cobello of Dabao City National High School and yours truly. And for grade 10, of course, we have Ma'am Vivian Rodriguez from Kalina National High School. Ma'am Judith Mosquete of Santa Ana National High School. Our So, next. Then, the title page. Yun yung title page. After the title page, we have next, sir. Uh, the preface or the introduction. The introduction is actually composed of two parts. Uh, the introductory message for the facilitators or the teachers. And the second part here is uh, the introductory message for the learners. Okay. So right after the preface for the learners, uh, next, sir. Next slide. So we are done with the uh, preliminary pages. Tapos na tayo sa cover page, title page, copyright page. Now let's proceed to the body. So the body is actually composed of icons. Yung mga writers ng ADM last December, more or less, pare-pareho lang ang mga icons na ginamit this time here. Okay, so the first icon here is what I need to know. What I need to know. Uh, yun yung example niya sa kabilang side ng what I need to know. This will give you an idea of the skills or competencies you are expected to learn in the movie. are listed here, including the learning objectives of the lesson in that particular module. So, nakasulat na the lesson title or the topic title and then the learning competencies. Okay, next. Number two, uh, the next icon is what I know. 
Yan yung example niya sa what I know. This part includes activity that aims to check what you already know about the lesson to take. Uh, this is quite similar to activating prior learning. You are uh, checking through this activity uh, regarding the prior learning or mga related learnings of our learners. Okay, next. Number three. Uh, number three is what's in? What's in? So, in what's in, this is a brief drill or review to help you link the current lesson with the previous one. So, I will not dwell so much on explaining the content for icons because that will be explained later by, by our speaker on content, Sir Amir Hatim, I guess. Pero, this is an example of what's in. Parang ano lang siya, brief drill or review. Okay. And then, uh, what's new? Another icon, what's new? The example niya. Ng what's new? Nasa, yes, that's a screen na. In this portion, the new lesson will be introduced to you in various ways. Story, song, a poem, a problem opener, an activity, or a situation. So we can use various literary pieces here as springboard. Let's just make make sure that it is original work or we cite the source correctly. So, para siyang lesson uh, presentation or springboard leading to our main topic. So, that's what's new. Next. Okay. The next part is what is it? What is it? This section provides a brief discussion of the lesson. This aims to help you discover and understand new concepts and skills. This is the lesson presentation part, actually. You write here a short lesson discussion that includes definition of important terms in the lesson. Gaya ng nasa example, nag-define siya on models. Then, also, you can provide here illustrations. So you can sit down or maybe uh, you can visualize or request your illustrator for possible uh, sketches prior to your drafting of your final. This original version of the module is actually extracted to fit into the new template. Evaluated by Ma'am Bibilin Rodriguez, an illustrator, the very competent Ma'am Ivy Joan Tambala. So, ito yung parang lesson presentation with illustration, a sample. Sige, next slide. Next slide, sir. Uh, wala pa tadi ya, sir. Atras pagamay. Ana, sir. sir. Uh, um, okay, ana. So, so that's a sample of yung lesson discussion niya with the topic and possible illustrations. So, next slide, please. Okay, next is what's more. In what's more icon, this comprises activities for independent practice to solidify your understanding and skills of the topic. You may check the answers to the exercises using the answer key at the end of the module. So this is more of 
application or drill. So, sa sample natin, we have a sentence completion and paragraph completion. What's in what's more? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, next is what I have learned. In the icon, what I have learned, this includes questions or blank sentence paragraph to be filled in to process what you learned from the lesson. So this can be a wrap up or a generalization. You can actually uh, state your, what I have learned in a tabular or columnar manner para mas ma mas para maiba naman siya, aside from that traditional way of uh, presenting it, you can actually use uh, different infographics if available. So that's what I have learned. Next. Next is what I can do. In the icon, what I can do, this section provides an activity which will help you transfer your knowledge or skill into real life situations or concern. This section provides activity which help you transfer your knowledge. Uh, of course, Modulito, so this is another uh, writing activity. I do not know if uh, you can insert more uh, creative way aside from here. Okay. Model man ito. Baka yung ibang learning competency, you can come up with different activity na challenging pero uh, kayang gawin ng bata without uh, the facilitation of the teacher. Next. Okay. Uh, the next part of the body is the assessment. This is a task which aims to evaluate your level of mastery in achieving the learning competency. So the assessment or evaluation, the example presented, uh, test one here is actually sentence completion. Then the test two, niya, it is still sentence completion, but they have to identify the functionality now of the model. So, mas, mas higher ang, ang level niya. Okay, next. So, this is the second part of the assessment. Yung, the students uh, will identify the model and, of course, uh, the function. Then, right after assessment, uh, we have additional activities. Additional activities. Passer. This portion, ah, okay, so yes. We still have additional activities uh, right after assessment. Baka hindi lang nasali, no? So right after assessment, we still have additional activity or activities. So in this portion, another acti activity will be given to you or to your learners to enrich your knowledge or the knowledge of the learners of the lesson learned. This also tends retention of learned concepts. So, ang last part ng body right after assessment is additional activity. Then, uh, next slide, please. Then, the, the third part, uh, we're done with the preliminary pages. Then the body and the third part is the source. This is composed of the answer key and uh, the references. So uh, answer key and the references. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, Bonnie. For the general Hello. elements and okay, for the general elements and technical specification of the 
Alternative Delivery Mode. Please help me welcome Dr. Aubrey Torrentera. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Sir Mel. Good morning, Dr. Ann. Good morning, everyone. Sir Mel. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. I-try na po o present using ka ng PowerPoint, sir, kung okay na siya. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oo. Sana, sir, may makita siya. Ah, na, sige ma'am, nag-presenting pa. Wait ma'am. Oh, okay. Na na ma'am. Na na ma'am. Aw. Oh. Sige, slide show na ko sir. Kung dito oh, ba siya ma patuloy sir. Go ahead. Ano sir? Uh, ah, putol okay. siya ma'am. Kato na lang ma'am niya. I-PDF na lang. I-enlarge lang ma'am. Okay raman ma'am. Kato lang PowerPoint niya. I-enlarge yes, lang. Sige. Okay. Okay. Yan. Ano, mga klaro na siya. Sige pa, ma'am. Ah, okay. Okay na siya, ma'am. Ah, okay, ma'am. Okay na ni sir. Okay. So, so again, once again, good morning. Um, actually, I have um, a similar presentation with Sir Bonnie, but um, the presentation of Sir Bonnie was focused on one of the three main parts of the module, which is the body. So I am still going to run through with my presentation because um, based on experience, um, I believe that as a writer, module writer, especially for the first time writers, it is very important to be um, introduced to these different parts of the module because it might be overwhelming to be facing the module for the first time. Okay, so let's start. So as mentioned by Sir Bonnie, the module has three major parts. The first part is the front matter. The second is the body, which was the focus of the presentation of Sir Bonnie. And the last part is the back matter. So let us first start with the front matter. So what can we see with the front matter of the front outside cover page? So when you receive the module, this is the first page that you can see. No? So, and it has also um, different parts. First, we have the grade level identifier. So this is the grade level identifier. Um, we have to, to pay attention to this because um, the module that might be given to us may not be the correct grade level. So we have to take note of the grade level that we are assigned in and we have to edit. So as you can see, this module is intended for grade three. That is why we can see in the grade level identifier that is number three. So if we are assigned, for example, in grade seven, so we have to change that into seven. And the module that, that, may be, that might be given to you may not also be in, this box may not also be in color light blue. So just like what was given to me, it's in color red. So in English, we are assigned with color light blue. So we have to edit this box. This box, we have to change the fill of this box into light blue because that is the assigned color for English. Um, next is we have also the adapted identifier in the form of the adapted logo. We do not have to change that. Next is the resource title. So apart from the grade level identifier, this is also one part that we have to edit. Um, hindi lahat ng module, ang sample template that might be given to us may not be in English, no, science or in math. So we have to change the, the learning area. We also have to change the, the quarter, the module number, and the title. So as a writer, we are the ones to 
do develop our own title for the module. We have the freedom to do that. Next is the cover art. We do not have the to change that also because that is already provided. Next is the ATM logo. And last is the violator. So again, on the cover page, we only have to change the fill of the, the grade level identifier into light blue, change the grade level, and we also have to edit the resource title. So that is all for the um, cover page. Next to the cover page is the copyright page. So this was already presented by Sir Bonnie. Okay, so what are the parts that we have to edit on this page? First, we have to edit the title. So as you can see here in my presentation, it's written there, science for grade three. So we have to, to pay attention to that. We have to edit that into English and the grade level that we are assigned in. We also, again, have to edit the quarter, the module number, and the title. So only those on the title part ang dapat natin i-edit. Next is, this is the copyright. We do not have to change anything on this part. Next is the publisher. Dili po na siya i-edit. No editing on that part. And the next is the development team. So this is where we are going to write our name as the writer of the module, the editors, and the reviewers. I am not still sure who are the reviewers or who are the editors. Kung as one lang ba na sila with the evaluator, but... but uh, mag-wait lang to further instruction but ang sure na to na ma-edit diri is the name of the writer, the name of the illustrator, and also the management team of which we will be provided with the names by LR Seguro. And also this part at the bottom, we will be provided with the entries on this part. After the copyright page, we will see the title page. So again, the, this one inside the red box, um, these are only the things that we should edit. Again, we should edit the grid level, the, the learning area, the quarter number, the module number, and also the title. Other than that, the DepEd logo, it has to remain on that page. After the title page is the introductory message page. So as mentioned by Sir Bonnie, um, the message is intended for both the facilitator and the learner. So this is the message for the facilitators. It gives instruction to the facilitator. So who is the facilitator with the this type of, of um, delivery of learning? It can be the teacher, it can be the parents, or any adult. No? So, so this part gives us the, the instruction on how to use the material. So what are we supposed to edit on this part? Ilang nakabox sa red. So we have to change the subject with the grade level and also the level. Other than that, um, leave them as they are. Ito, um, at first, at first, when I was looking at this page, um, I thought that we are going to edit this box here. Sababa, knows the teacher. So this contains helpful tips or strategies that will help you in guiding the learners. So I thought that we are going to edit this box, this page. But I realized eventually that um, we are not supposed to edit this this page, but um. We might, we might be using this box in a body parts of our module wherein we have a special instruction to our teachers or to the facilitator of this module. So if we have a special instruction, mga tips, or 
anything that we want to highlight, we can use this box doon sa body in our body of, in the body of our module para mas makita ni facilitator kung ano yung mga dapat niyang i-stress during the facilitation. Facilis, facilis, facilitation of the lesson. This is the message for the learners. It gives an overview of the content of the module. It defines and explains the standard symbols or the icons used to represent the module. So we do not have to edit anything at this page except, of course, itong mga nakabox. The, the learning area, the grade level, and also the lesson title. Okay. So that ends the front matter of the module. Mga preliminaries as what was mentioned by Sir Bonnie. So now let's go to the body, the inside page. So as as mentioned by Sir Bonnie, the first the first part of the body is what I need to know. That is the introduction. It contains learning objectives to be to be developed, and it introduces the topic or the content briefly. Next introduction is the pre-assessment. What I know. So the number of items in the pre-assessment is dependent on the key stage. So since um, you will be developing modules for the junior high school, um, the pre-assessment should have 15 items, multiple choice. Okay, since grade 7 to 10 is already in key stage 3. So 15 items na po as well as in key stage 4 that includes grades 11 to 12. The next part is the lesson proper. We have the review or in the module it's called what's in. It's, um, next is the activity, the what's new. The discussion of the activity, what is it, um, that also includes the mini-lesson, the enrichment activity, what's more. So those are the parts of the lesson proper. I am going to discuss that in detail because that was already presented by Sir Bon. So after the lesson proper, we have the generalization, which is termed as what I learned. After that is the application, the what I can do. And next is the post difference. Since you are developing modules for key stage three and maybe four, so the, both the pre and the post assessments should have 15 items, multiple choice. And last is the additional activity. So that ends our body the body part of the module. Next is the back matter. So what can we see in the back matter? We have the answer key, the reference, and the back outside cover, which contains the feedback box. So this is the feedback box that we can see on the last part of the module, and we do not have to edit anything inside that box because it is already divided. Okay, so we are done with the parts. So let us now talk about the typography of the body text. So take note that this is only about the body text, not about the front matter, not about the back matter. So the, the formatting on the body text is different from the format in the front and back matters. So for, for grade 7 to 12, the font style that will be used is are these. Now these are the options. We can use Arial, Times New Roman, or Bookman Old Style. But since we uh, we will be provided with a sample template, as I check, it's in Bookman Old Style. So we do not have to change the font style. We do not have to change the font size. We only need to edit yung text na lang. Replace na lang natin ang content. But as to the format, it's already provided. So 
let's leave it as is na lang. So it's in Bookman Old Style and I think it's in size 11. So it can be tough, but we do not have to change that. For the heading, it's already set to a minimum of 15 and maximum of 24. So what was provided in the in the sample template is between these two, in between 15 and 24. And for the subheadings, it's in between 11 to 13. And line spacing is consistent at 1.5. And for the alignment, um, with 12, it should be G5. And the ratio for art text is that there should be 30% art. Again, we're only talking about the body. Um, there should be 30% art and 70% text. Okay, so again, this is only good for the body. The font style and the font size in, in the parts, in the front and the back matters. Delete na nato ito sila hilabtan. Okay. So before we end, these are just some of the reminders. So it was agreed during the core group meeting that um, it would be more practical to, to use a box in place of the actual illustration while we are crafting our module because it would be um, a waste of time and effort of on the part of the illustrators if you would be drawing a lot of things and then by by evaluation reject na ang ilang drawing. So so as a writer, um it would be better if you would just plan out what type of illustrations we are going to include in our in our module and we we will only insert text box where we are planning to place each illustration and inside the box we are going to write a brief description of the illustration that we plan to be placed in there because that would be more practical because there might be instances where in the, the evil waiters may find so better na wala pa siya na drawing para dili food masayang ang effort and time of the illustrator because as per experience, malangay yun ta sa illustration kay limited, very limited ang number of our illustrators. Kung idaghan silag i-drawing, idaghan silag mga writers na magpa-drawing sa ilaha. So, using a box would be more practical. And the last reminder is that only edit the text. In the sample template that will be given to us, we're only going to edit the text. Leave na everything as they are. And that would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Ao. You can now stop sharing. <laughs> uh, by the way, you will be given copies of Dr. Ao's presentation as well as Ma'am Janice. Uh, advice is to have three or more copies of that presentation. All you need to do is to erase the text. Okay, pag ma-erase to siya, ma-retain lang gihapon to siyang size sa font, ang font style, and the color that Ma'am Ma Ao is asking you to present. Okay, at this point, it is more a discussion about module content to be given to us by our master teacher one from Kalinan National Division, uh, from Kalinan National High School Division. She is also our learning resource evaluator, Dr. Divilen M. Rodriguez. Hello, Kalinan sir. Na <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'm going to go to the Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ma'am Mayan. Good morning, Sir Mel. And Hi, Ma'am Obrey, to everybody and to everything. Good morning. Sir Mel, am I loud and clear? Yes, Ma'am. Okay. Wapo gidaining signal sa kalinan, Sir, no? 
Ma'am, ikaw ragod kay dako kay na. <laughs> Full screen din ay mo. Okay na ma'am, masindot gani. <laughs> oh, basta ha. <laughs> Sayo kay ko diri sa kalina ning ani. Ang saan pagpagamay, sir? Ay- ayaw na ma'am, okay na na. Okay. Wa pa man ya po. Okay. So this morning, I will be presenting Kumusta ang screen, sir? Ah, uh, klaro ma'am. Nag uh, uh, is it clear or padakan pa nako? Ikaw na lang siguro siya ma'am kung Oo, uh, okay ma'am. Okay ni, mas okay ni. Oo. Uh-uh. Dili ni mo siya ma kuan ma'am slide show. Ah sige, I will try to slide show. Uh-uh. This one is uh-uh. or is already slide show. Yes ma'am, okay na ma'am. Okay sige. So once again, good morning. So uh Wala pa, ka ma- wala pa pangandam ang slides. So, for my session, since Ma'am Aubrey, Sir Bonnie has already discussed uh, comprehensively uh, the the format or the template for the ADM module, I will be discussing to you some guidelines in writing the ADM modules. I will be giving you tips on writing based on my LR or learning resource evaluation. And I am also going to share a planning worksheet which will serve as a guide before we write. Because according to Benjamin Franklin, not planning, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So therefore, we have we are going to plan before we write our module. So to start with, uh, we will have a very short review of what is an ADM or, or alternative delivery mode module. So actually, this is a Republic Act 10618, which tells that the school should be able to provide quality education uh, to students with who are who have constraints in going to school. So, who are the target learners for the ADM? They could be the late enrollist, working students, overage learners, marginalized learners, meaning they are poor and their school is, uh, their distance is. Uh, their Hello, ma'am, Debs. Sir. Ma'am, nagablink good siya, ma'am. Ibalik na lang siguro at itong kuan, ma'am. Nakapa, naka, di, oh, anak na lang, ma'am. Ay na lang slideshow, ma'am. Okay, sige, sir. Uh, klaro, gyapon. Oh, klaro, gyapon siya, ma'am. So marginal, marginalized learners, meaning they are learners who are poor and they are their residence is far from the school. So transient family, yung yung palagi lang uh, naglilipat na mga families, especially uh, students who are uh, children of soldiers maybe. Uh, learners who are in conflict with the law or the CICL, learners with poor medical condition. I remember with Mom Aubrey and Mom Janice, um, we wrote uh, uh, we wrote ADM modules for children at uh, mga cancer patients, Gani, uh, House of Hope, victims of natural calamities and armed conflict. Learners involved in curricular and co-curricular activities. Uh-oh. So, dapat if students are away from school because of co-curricular activities, they should be given ADM modules. Learners who need to take care of their siblings and do other household chores. Dapat hindi pwedeng mag-drop ang mga bata just because they take care of their siblings. They have to take ADM. Learners in difficult circumstances, like when they are pregnant, when they have problems with their families. So, uh, they don't need to stop going to school but take ADM modules. Learners who are affected by class suspensions due to natural hazards such as the COVID-19 and national and local celebration. So, uh, if you might be asking why we have to make ADM modules, because it is provided for by the law that learners who are affected by class suspensions just like this, wherein a face-to-face is not possible due to the COVID pandemic, then 
ADM module should be available. ADM existed long time ago to with the project in MISOSA, E-Impact, EAST, and ADM. With the project EAST, ADM yun, kaya lang dapat nang mapalitan because the curriculum there was still the old curriculum. So that is why we are making ADM modules uh, aligned with the K-12 curriculum. You might be asking, bakit ADM ang ipapasulat? So, these are the benefits of the ADM modules. And again, ADM modules have been tried and tested. Number one, learners can get immediate feedback. Mamaya, ipapakita natin. Or yung mga tanong like, bakit merong answer key? Because in an ADM module, learners can get immediate feedback. It is a module that encourages mastery of learning. Bakit mastery of learning? Because students can always go back to the module. Kasi pag nasa classroom yan, pag mahina yung, yung auditory skill ng bata, ma, ano, malilipasan talaga siya. But if there is an ADM module, pwede niyang balik-balikan yung module. Learners can acquire a better self-study or learning skills. Pag ang bata talaga, uh, diligent sa kanyang school with or without the teacher, kung merong module, magsta-study talaga yan siya. Eh, kahit na ang bata pumapasok sa school with the teacher, hindi nga nagsa-study. But there are really students who really love schooling and even with without the teacher, they will still study the module. And with the use of the ADM module, learners are trained to be independent and responsible of their own learning. Okay. So, depende talaga yan sa bata. Uh, mabuti na lang yun kaysa walang ginagawa ang bata for the whole nine months kasi walang paso. Learners are given opportunity to reflect on information and their own learning experience. And then learners can study at, at their preferred time. So, walang malilay, walang magkakat classes dito. And if students are really very diligent, they can uh, they can use their preferred time. They can still work at home. And a module being a self-contained learning resource provides a comprehensive coverage of a given topic. And because this is an ADM module, we can plan it. We can really make a good plan on how to make the topic more easy and more comprehensive. Unlike pag nasa sa actual classroom tayo. So those are the benefits of the ADM module. And since that is a module that should provide quality learning, there is a quality assurance on content, language, design, and layout, which will be discussed later by our speakers. So these are the specifications or some tips on how to write the ADM module. LR is easy or the learning resource is easy to understand. Let us try to put ourselves on the shoes of our learners. The language should be easy to understand. Do not use uh, words that will, that will let the children look at the dictionary for its meaning. So it should be easy to understand. Um, arrange aligned to the learning competencies, of course, and now we are using the MELTS. Lessons are arranged from simple to complex. Alam natin kung paano gagawin yan. So we start with a simple activity down to a more complicated activity. Visuals and graphic organizers are used to facilitate better understanding of the lesson. Graphic organizers are very powerful tools. It should be as the size and the letters and sentences should be appropriate to the target learner. So, sabi ni Ma'am Aubrey kanina, uh, ang font size magde-depend yan kung ano ang uh, key stage na, na sinusulata natin. And to be safe, let us not change the font size of the module for consistency and uniformity. Next is, it should be conversational. So later, I am going to show you a sample of a module that is conversational. Pictures, illustrations, and articles are original or with author's permission. So there are free uh, sources of illustrations from our LRMDS portal. So we can use them. So aside from that, we also have our in-house illustrators as mentioned by Mamjo Jane earlier. 
who are going to uh, make our illustrations. And if we are going to, uh, to lift it from other sources, author's permission is, should be sought. Um, the LR module should have a variety of engaging and motivating activities. So there should be different activities or else, or strategies or else students will find it uh, boring and less interesting. Now on social content. So it should be free from ideological, cultural, religious, racial, and gender biases and prejudices. So, meron pa lang ganito. So, for example, um, uh, we have we have evaluated a module at the regional level na merong pigs. So, and then, uh, of course, in the Muslim culture, pigs are taboo. So, as much as possible, to respect, in respect of their culture, uh, we are not going to include them. Uh, and other, and other animals also are things that are taboo to a particular culture. I have also, uh, uh, we have also edited a module wherein uh, the module, the, the, the title of the module is Opposite Meaning. And then the cover is, there are two uh, children. One is, uh, has a good uh, grooming and the other one has tattered clothes. So what is it trying to imply? Is it trying to imply uh, any discrimination between the rich and the poor? So and what is the purpose of doing it? So dapat hindi ganun. It should, for example, uh, about family. And then uh, it's a bias to say that a family is composed of a mother, a father, and the children. What if... Uh, wala na siyang papa or wala na siyang mama. So, let us avoid uh, these biases. It should also enhance the development of desirable values and traits. Um, for example, uh, in a module that we have uh, evaluated, meron story doon na yung hunter at the end of the story, pinatay niya yung bird. And again, uh, uh, that violates social content. So, ang ginawa namin doon sa module, since it is originally written by, by an author, so ang ginawa na lang niya, ang bird, uh, the bird was set free at the end of the story to make it, uh, uh, to adhere to social content. Meron din doon story ng Santa Cruz na, na merong bata doon na she wished na madapa yung Rena Elena. So it's not good to for to teach uh, to to show our students that about this not good value. So dapat papalitan. So we have to be very choosy in in choosing our selections in in such a way that it is going to promote desirable values. Uh, we are going, we, we should also avoid mentioning commercial brands. So, ang sabi na lang dito, pwede tayong magawa-gawa ng ating mga brands or corporate logos. Uh, present public servants as responsible. No? So, doon sa stories natin, ipoproject natin no, ang mga pulis, mga kurakot, or ganun. Because if children are going to read this, uh, parang sa kanila magiging okay yon so we have to project that uh, public servants are there so that uh, it will give them a good image and if they want to become one in the future they will also be responsible avoid bias prejudice and stereotyping of various genders meron kami na evaluate na learning resource uh, that that the story is about gaano ka diligent yung bata in achieving his future like uh, she, he lost his parents and then doon siya sa kanyang tita tapos doon sa story kasi ang tita malupit para bang gina stereotype natin that if that if ilo na yung bata pwede na siyang pagsamantalahan ng mga ng mga adult in the family so hindi yun siya uh, hindi yun siya it violates social content so ang purpose ng story is to is to show how kani determine the boy is hindi na siguro dapat sabihin doon na kahit na malupit yung kanyang 
yung kanyang tita, nakasurvive pa rin siya. Because there are different ways na to show that uh, somebody is determined without showing the tita as that. Another is, uh, it should pro promote proper nutrition and avoid featuring junk food or injuring. Na, pinyari, gagawa ka ng module. Tapos, doon sa picture mo is, um, isa sa, isa sa drawing mo lang na nag-take ng yung mga bata and then yung kinain nila, junk food. So, it's, it's not promoting proper nutrition. Discourage the habitual use of tobacco and alcohol and the use of restricted drugs. Merong story doon na ganun, no? So, portray a lifestyle that contributes toward reducing the impact of climate change. So, uh, doon sa story or doon sa picture, nag-burn ng plastic. So, again, social content. So, um, marami pa. So, for this, I will not be discussing everything for social content, but I will be giving you uh, 71 pages ABN standards for you to go over social content so that you will be able to uh, to to safeguard our module. So this time, uh, our next question is, how am I going to write? So Sir Bonnie and Mom Aubrey has already discussed the different parts of the module. So, paano ba gagawa ng module? Uh, writers are very creative. They have their own styles and of writing. So, and again, planning is very important because if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So, for that, I have here a planning worksheet a planning worksheet on how to write the ABN module. So, if you are going to look at this, there are one two, three, four uh, columns of the module. So, step one, or the element of the module. Uh, column two, the activity. Column three is the procedure, description, and strategy. And column four is the illustration. Kasi sabi ni Ma'am Opre kanina, hindi muna tayo magpapadraw unless nakita na ni evaluator that that uh, illustration is needed. Kasi pag hindi needed, murag bulak-bulak lang siya, dili na lang ta magpa-drawing. Okay? Para dili po mahago ang ato ang illustrators because they are still going to, illust to do illustrations for other writers. So, mauna siya ang mga parts sa ato ang planning worksheet. And then, we do this before we write the module. If we fail to plan, then our module will be a catastrophe, especially for first-time writers. And even I, isag kapila na ko nagsulat, no, dili jug ko mo start og sulat kung wala ko'y planning worksheet. Because I want to, I want to make sure that my time will not be wasted keeping and changing the activities all over again. Okay? So, those are the different elements, so you know that already. I have here a sample planning uh, worksheet. This is an accomplished one. Okay, wait, I am going to uh, show the word copy for this. Okay, wait. Is it clear, Sir Mel? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, this is a planning worksheet for an ABM module. Again, this is just a planning worksheet because, again, Benjamin Franklin said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So, we have here the subject, the grade level, the quarter, and the module title. So, this is an English subject. The level is grade 6. Asensya na po kung grade 6 ang ating sample ngayon. It's because this was also the module that I presented yesterday. And always think that the process is still the same. The, the stages and the elements are still the same. Ang, ang difference lang doon is uh, the process and the structure is the same. Ang difference lang doon is the learning competency, the complexity, and the difficulty of the, of the learning competency. 
So, stage 1. So, kunyari sa stage 1, what I need to know. Diba sabi do on the description that in what I need to know, you are just going to inform the students what is the learning competency and what are the objectives or the specific objectives of the different activities in your uh, in your module. So, illustration needed, walang illustration na kailangan. Okay. Next is what I know. So, so what I know, that is a pretest. Okay, that is a pretest. So, and remember, uh, let us be reminded that the number of questions will be based on the key stage. And this is uh, elementary grade six, that is key stage two. So, there will be 10 multiple choice questions. And then for grade seven to grade. Uh, to grade 10, that is 15 items. So, multiple choice questions lang for what I know because that is just a big test. Let's go to what's in. So, so what's in, this is a sort of a review. So, you can have a very short activity for this. Uh, different writers are, have uh, different styles in writing. So, for this, uh, you can have a very simple or short review. Sabi doon, pwedeng pwedeng question lang. So, kung question lang din ang, ang gagamitin mo para ka lang din nag-retest. No? So, sa akin, for this time, uh, by the way, this module on idiomatic expression, I would like to acknowledge that the, the activities here were lifted from the module of Ma'am Janice Abrea, Tugbok uh, Central Elementary School, and the and the illustrator is Ma'am Joan Ivory Tambala from Bago Elementary School, somewhere there. So the active, some of the activities here are listed from her module, and I have to add more activities for the sake of today's uh, discussion. So what's the, so since the topic is about idiomatic expression and the learning competency is infer the meaning of the idiomatic expression using context clues. So for what's in, this is just a short review. Ayoko yung, kunyari, ayaw mo yung uh, question lang kasi may, may pretest ka na. So as a writer, gusto mong meron silang picture analysis. So ilagay ko dito picture analysis. This is an added activity. So in the picture analysis, uh, this is for this stage here, uh, I am going to show the students a picture and they are going to analyze. The picture is about a father and a son watching a heavy rain through the window. Later, ipapakita ko ang buong module using uh, based from this uh, based from this worksheet. So sabi natin that in stage uh, in what's in my picture analysis tapos a picture is about a father and son watching a heavy rain through the window. And then these are no prompt questions. Where cats and dogs falling from the sky? What does the father mean when he said it's raining cats and dogs? So again, this is a very short review. It only needs one answer that will link uh, the previous knowledge to the, new, uh, to the new lesson. It's a very short review. Next stage is what's new. So that is introducing the new lesson or the new, the new flow. So for this one, you can have, you can use songs, you can have, you can use illustrations, you can use uh, whatever it is or strategy that you think is appropriate. So for this, uh, the title of my activity is a Helping Hand and this was lifted from the module of Mam Janice, uh, uh, Ma Janice Abrea. So there is a dialogue there so a dialogue so i am going to so it's either you can develop your own dialogue or you can lift from other sources a dialogue containing idiomatic expression so based from the right based from the dialogue merong boy at saka girl na mag converse or mag -uusap. so uh, mas maganda if you can make your own uh stories or, or dialogues. So, mas maganda, hindi ka na mag-acknowledge ng source. And then, uh, there is a lacking of difficult words if it is necessary. Now, remember uh, to use very simple words. 
because uh, some students may not have internet connection to look for the meaning of words. They don't have cell phones. They don't have dictionaries at home. That is a reality. But if, uh, but if you are going to unlock uh, difficult words using context clues, they don't need a dictionary. They only have to read and analyze. So, maganda ang unlocking of difficult words through context clues. Pero if it's not necessary, then it's not, we don't need to unlock. Next is, in this activity, students will infer the meaning of the idiomatic expressions. And students will also determine the context clues that help them arrive at the meaning of the idiomatic expression. So, yun yung plan ko for the activity on helping hand or activity two. Or yun yung plan natin. Let's move on to the next stage that is what is it so in what is it that is the discussion proper and when we discuss it there should be interaction mas maganda merong question do, doon so for this one uh, make a discussion on idiomatic expressions using the idioms found in the reading selection or found in the uh, dialogue that was presented in the previous activity and how context clues help them in finding the meaning. So, illustration needed, walang illustration na kailangan dito. So, none. Then, let's go to what's more. So, so what's more, that is the deepening of the topic or the skill. So, we have to provide um, activities that will allow students to solidify their learning. So, that is why for this stage here, we have two activities. You can have three or more activities. The, the more the activities, uh, uh, the more that students will be, uh, the more students will solidify their learning about the skill or the, or the topic. So for activity three, that is inching toward to your dream, forward to your dreams, this was lifted from the module of Mam Obre, uh, Mam Janice. So students will study a comic strip and identify the idiom that matches the given meaning. So here, I will ask the illustrator, illustrator to illustrate two small pigeons talking while watching a hawk flies high. Then activity four, inferring the meaning where students will put a check mark on on the circle corresponds to the correct meaning of the highlighted idiom. So, gagawa ako dito ng graphic organizer kasi meron na akong comic strip. So, ang illustration, no need to illustrate, just a graphic organizer. What I have learned. So, so what I have learned, this is the generalization part. So, again, there are different ways of doing the generalization. You can have a, you can have a statement and students are going to complete the statement. You can have a... Students can do a bullet of what uh, they have learned about the, the topic or the skill. Or uh, kanina, sample ni sir, merong graphic organizer. You can do journal entries. So, illustration, walang kailangan kasi ang ipapagawa natin dito, mag-complete the statement lang sila. Let's move on to what I can do. So, this is application. Application in real life situation. So mag-isip tayo ng activity kung to allow the students to see where I can use this topic, where can I use this skill in real life. So that is uh, that is application. So medyo mabigat siya because that is to apply knowledge skills in real life situation. So, ang naisip kong activity is activity 6, what's in a song. So, the teacher, I will look for a song with idiomatic expressions. And, uh, with idiomatic expressions. Now, in a T-chart, students will write the idiomatic expression on the first column. And students will infer the meaning and write them on the second column. So, meron akong song, meron din akong T-chart, which is another graphic organizer to allow the students to uh, visualize information. Kasi yung mga songs are very rich with idiom. They keep on sing singing it, but they don't understand what it means. Bakit? Hindi sila nag-a-analyze. But this time, 
through this uh, application activity, they will be able to analyze the meaning of the idiomatic expressions that are found in the song that they usually sing. Paganda din kung ang song yung at beat. So, or updated din. So, for illustration, aswerte si illustrator kasi hindi siya mag-drawing for this activity. And for the assessment, uh, for the assessment, students will encircle the meaning of the highlighted idiom based on context clue. So again, this is still congruent with our, uh, with our objective and that is to infer the meaning of the idiomatic expression. Okay? Uh, ten items lang po because this is key stage two, grade six. And for the additional activities, this activity is kasi repetition kasi pag palaging paulit-ulit na kasi palaging paulit-ulit na gagawin ng mga bata, they are going to master it. Again, constant practice makes, do not makes it perfect but makes it permanent. So for this activity, parang na uh, uh, teacher writes a dialogue and teacher will and students will write the meaning of the highlighted idiom in the dialogue but this time the teacher will no longer provide uh, the choices. So students are going to do this on their own. Okay. So for this, Again, I lifted this from the module of Mom Janice, two best friends conversing. So, when you are done with your, if you are going to look at your module, no, sa planning pa lang, alam na natin na, machi-check natin kung ang ating mga activities nag-match nag -match ba sa mga learning competencies. Machi-check din natin kung ilang mga strategies meron tayo para hindi siya boring sa mga bata. So, we have teacher analysis, we have dialogue, we have comic strip, uh, we have graphic organizers, we have a song. So, we already have five uh, different strategies in one module, in one module about idiomatic expressions. So, uh, Kung confident na tayo that students uh, na okay na ang module na to, wala na siyang problema, marami ng strat activities, varied na, nag-hit na yung mga learning competencies, na-hit na yung mga, ac mga activities with the learning competencies, then that's our, then we are done with our planning worksheet. So pagtapos na tayo sa ating planning worksheet, we can now start writing our module. So this time, I am going to show you a sample of a module based on um, based on the the planning worksheet that we have just done earlier. So again, I have to take credit of this module to Mom and Chinese. And again, some activities are are uh, are included for this. Nang iba tinanggal. Sir Mel, claro Sir Mel. Sir Mel? Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am, claro po. So Pero, this is now, yes, sir. Sky yes, blue sir. tayo, ma'am, no? sa color ng grade 6 ba yan siya? Ay, yeah. Sky uh, blue. Bakit may naging green? Okay lang, ma'am. Debut na ba yan ako? Okay. Sige. Uh, so again, this is the module. Sorry ha, dapat do na to, na-change na na ako to. Kasi hindi ni mao akong na-open, paita ba. So what I need to know, this, uh, again, we have said earlier, I mentioned lang na to ang learning competencies and the different uh, specific objectives. Identify the idiomatic expression, determine the context. And napansin ninyo, itong tatlong ito, yun yung nakita natin kanina doon sa template. Okay. What I what I know this is a pretest. So again, uh, multiple choice of 10 items kasi key stage 2. Pero sa atin sa uh, sa high school, it should be 15. Key stage 3 dapat 15 ito. And we start with lesson 1. Uh, this is the introduction. Every day in our lives, we use idiom. Being able to determine or decipher its meaning is very important for effective communication. So, kulang pa ang introduction. So, we have to add more for our introduction. 
And for what's in, that is a review. So this is what I have said earlier. What do you mean? Look closely at the picture. What does the father mean when he said it's raining cats and dogs? Does he mean that cats and dogs are falling from the sky? Of course not. The father said something which has a different meaning. Can you still remember how these words or expressions are called? So again, this is very conversational. This is what we mean by a conversational tone. As if tayo talaga yung nakipag-usap doon sa bata. Then, what's new? So, this is now uh, our uh, activity proper. So, the title is A Helping Hand. Diba? Na-mention natin kanina na meron tayong a dialogue. So, kasi merong mga mga dapat i-unlock na mga difficult words. Meron munang unlocking of difficult words. Okay? Maganda kung context clue. Again. So, did you find everything right? You may check the key to correction for that. Right answers. Now, are you ready to read the dialogue? You may read it silently. Okay. So, again, conversational. So, this is now the dialogue. So, there is a picture here. A boy and a girl uh, are talking. So, that's the dialogue. Did you find the idioms in the dialogue? You're right. They are the ones that are highlighted. Niya, na siya activity, niya, ipakuha niya ang context clue and their meaning. Moving on, what is it? Mauna ni siya ang discussion proper. So, if you are going to look at the discussion proper, na adiha ang definition sa idiomatic expressions. Niya, naapod siya illustration. Um, let us try to reuse illustration uh, kung kailangan. No? Kasi kapoy baya basahon pag nakaparagraph na tanan. No? Kapoy yun jud ang bata ana. So kung naay mga illustrations, the better. Yeah. No, na siya ang yang discussion proper. Discuss lang yun siya. And then so what's more, these are now uh, providing more activities to solidify, enrichment activities to solidify understanding on the topic or Skill. So, di ba ni Ana takaganina nga, inching forward uh, to your dreams. So, naana diri ang pigeon, naana diri ang hawk. And they are conversing. And there are, uh, there are, read, refer to the comic strip, niya, matches, write the letter of the idiom that matches to the given meaning. Okay. And then, activity 4, infer the meaning. So, naalay graphic organizer na ay ano diri, uh, statement na ay idiomatic expression and then there are choices. What I have learned, this is now our generalization part and as I have said, ang akong ingon diri, magpa-complete lang ta, magpa-complete lang ko. And again, kamu pwede. Pwede mo magpahimu ang journal entries, pwede mo ipa ipa uh, state in bullet what they have uh, learned from the lessons. And then what I can do, this is now application of learning. So, here is the song written by, nah, you may sing the song if you know if you know it. After singing, identify anak. So, real life. Kasi sige ba, nagkanta-kanta ang mga bata, pero wa kay balog sa kung mga meaning sa idioms. And then we move on to assessment. And again, assessment, the number of items would depend on the key stage. And since this is key stage 2, so 10 items is enough. Sa Atua, sa junior high school, uh, we will have 15 items for this. Na ako test na. Pwede siya na test 1, pwede po siya na test 2. Pwede po siya paper pencil, pwede po siya other kinds of uh, Pwede po siya multiple choice, pero pwede po siya other activities. Na conversation niya, i-fill in nila ang blank to the appropriate, uh, ano, depende na po na siya. And again, let us always go back to our learning competency. And for the additional activity, na ay conversation here, and then they are going to, na ang conversation na ay mga figurative language, and students are going to write, the meaning of the figurative language independently. And of course, they will be able to do that because they have learned 
how to identify the context clues to help them find the meaning. And of course, the answer key and the references. So, I think uh, mauna siya ang whole module. Hello, Ma'am Devs. Yes, sir. Question from Ma'am Lariba po. Mm. Uh, her question is, Ma'am, for the case of subjective type of activities, do we have to also do we have to provide also the rubrics for evaluation? For yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Najud okay. na siya rubric, sir, because before students are going to do their, before they are going to write a poem or whatever it is, they should be guided with the rubric. Najud na siya rubric. Okay, salamat, ma'am. Again, for those who have questions, you can place your questions sa ating chat box po. Uh, sir, na ako'y clarification, uh, ma'am Jojane, uh, ma'am Jojane, uh, about atong speaking or listening. Yes, ma'am, uh, Dev. Ato na, diri na lang ako, or basi unya na lang, pa. Ay, sir, unya na lang siguro, sir. Ang kay para katuganing sa unda tung speaking kay na apabaya sila sir Amir and the rest maybe oh, they are sige, just going to write their question and later we are going to 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 revisit their questions okay so yes, I hope okay. mo tu siya ang process ah uh, fellow teachers who are who will be writing the module maghimo sa tao planning worksheet and after doing our planning worksheet uh, ato nang himuon ang ato ang module. And for that, thank you very much. I will, I will come back for your questions. Okay, thank you, you ma'am. So, the point of ma'am Debbie is, as a teacher, we have to play engineers also. We have to plan first before making yeah. our module. Exactly. Then, how are you? How are these evaluators uh, measure our work? This will be the, the discussion of our master teacher one of Davao City National High School. She is also a division learning resource evaluator. Please help me welcome Ma'am Maria Cecilia Calamba. Okay, good morning. How's my audio, sir? Okay, ma'am. Loud and clear. Okay, I'm going to discuss or present the guidelines on the con evaluation of DepEd ADM modules, only the evaluation tools okay, for a while. Um, but present, sir, your entire screen? Uh, sir, ma yes, ma'am. Uh, pwede, ma'am. How is it, sir? Wala pa siya, ma'am. Is it done in PowerPoint, ma'am, or in PowerPoint. Word? Ah, pwede, pwede po siya, ma'am. Window, a window na lang po. Okay. How is it? Nana, sir? Wala pa, ma'am. Nana, sir. Ah, okay, yes, ma'am. Uh -oh. Ayan na. Okay. So, since si Ma'am Develin has already discussed the content, mine is only the tool that the evaluators will use. Okay. And again, good morning, fellow teachers. I'm sure you are all excited to be part of this team of module writers for secondary level of the Dep Ed Division of Davao. Congratulations in advance. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, this is the tool for content only. There are three tools for the layout, the content, and the language. Okay, the first, there are six factors. Factor one is intellectual property rights compliance. 
Before planning on what text or photo to use in your module, make sure you consider copyright violation. We all know that when you say copyright, it is a type of intellectual property protection. Although it is safe to borrow a photo or a text for educational and non-profit purposes, still we need to acknowledge the source. So the evaluators of your module module will check on the following number one the learning resource has no copyright violations if you are going to use copyrighted text or copyrighted material such as perhaps a song a video they should be accurately cited and the references oh, sorry the references are properly cited in the bibliography, okay? So if we can use original stories, the better. And according to Mom Dibs a while ago, um, if you're going to use a text from somebody else, you have to ask permission first, okay? Next is factor two. The learning competencies. The okay, content is consistent with the targeted depth and learning competencies intended for the learning area and grade level. I think the depth ed has given us a new set of learning competencies for this school year because of this pandemic. So we will focus on those as what we usually do from preparation of our lesson to assessment, everything should be based on the learning competencies surely we will not be lost along the way so that is factor two moving on factor three the instructional design and organization since we are to provide specific objectives which are based on the learning competency everything in our module should be planned so as to achieve the objectives that we will be constructing. Okay, and these are the criteria. Number one, the learning resource contributes to the achievement of the specific objectives on the learning area and grade level for which it is intended. Number two, sequencing of contents and activities within each lesson facilitates achievement of objectives. And number three, content is suitable to the target learner's level of development needs and experience. I guess Mom Dibs has already explained about this. Let us just remember that we should always focus on our learners. The content and materials to be used are based on the learner's age, background, and level of development. Next, number four and Number four, content reinforces, enriches, and or leads to the mastery of the targeted learning competencies intended for the learning area and grade level. The discussion of the lesson, of the lesson or the activities to be accomplished by the learners should not be too easy nor too difficult. Baka for, for grade seven, parang pang grade 10 na, or the other way around, the grade then level, um, level niya is for grade 7. I think we know the level of understanding and the development, the readiness of our students, so we will base on those. Number five, content is logically developed and organized throughout the material. The lessons and the activities are arranged from simple to complex, from observable to abstract. We have to begin our lesson with something light and easy to follow to set the mood of the students. Baka if heavy na kaayo, they will lose already their interest. And then gradually increasing in complexity or difficulty. Okay. Number six, the LR or the learning resource contains useful introductions review summaries and other devices that facilitate smooth progression from one lesson to another. Okay, there are more. 
seven, development of lessons allows for review, comparison, and integration with previous lessons. So we will not focus only on the discussion when there's no review yet. Okay. Number eight, motivational strategies like advanced organizers, just like what Mom Devilin mentioned a while ago. Puzzles, games, this can be form of motivational strategies. It could be a song perhaps or a poem or even just pictures. Number nine, the LR or learning resource uses various teaching and learning strategies to meet individual differences, learning styles. So as not to bore our students, let us use different teaching and learning strategies, not only, uh, even in the assessment. Okay. Number 10, the learning resource develops higher cognitive skills. And of course, the 21st century skills, what are these? The critical thinking, creativity, problem solving, learning by doing, and other 21st century skills. Okay. Uh, by the way, if we can also differentiate our activities and the outputs expected from our students, the better. If we can consider the different abilities of our, our students, especially in the outputs that they are going to produce. Maybe uh, for those who are good in the arts or good in speaking. So you can differentiate if possible. Number 11, the LR enhances the development of desirable values and traits. So in the, in the tool that the evaluators will use, these are some of the values mentioned for a while. Okay, so these are included in the tool that the evaluators will be checking. So pride in being a Filipino, scientific attitude and reasoning, striving for excellence, love for country, helpfulness, teamwork, cooperation, unity, desire, desire to learn new things, honesty and trustworthiness, ability to know right from wrong, respect, critical and creative thinking, productive work. And if, if the trait or the especially Filipino values, which are not mentioned above, you can specify them on 11.30. Or um, the evaluator will identify what values are included in your module. So let's proceed to factor number four, instructional quality. There are six criteria. Number one is the content and information are accurate. We have to be very extra careful, especially if we will borrow materials from different online platforms or from printed materials. Check as many times as possible for accuracy. We don't want to mislead our learners. Okay, baka fake news. Okay, number two, content and information are up to date. Latest or current issues or current events are encouraged to be used, but we are also encouraged to contextualize. When we say contextualize, we can localize or indigenize our materials, but of course, original work will be best if you can make your own. So we don't have to ask permission from the owners. Okay, number three. The LR is free from any social content violation. Okay. Let us be guided by ethical standards in choosing materials in our module. Make sure that there are no questionable materials used, just like what Mandivilin mentioned a while ago. And she gave also some examples 
of violation of um, social standards. Four, LR is free from factual errors. Okay. So let us be very careful in choosing our materials. Let us again avoid um, mga fake news as our material. Five, LR is free from computational errors. If there are mathematical computation or maybe graphs, statistics that we are going to incorporate in our modules, Make sure that we will ask those who are good in this field if we doubt ourselves, especially that most of us English teachers are not so good in mathematics. So we may ask a mathematics teacher if we are not sure of our mathematical computation or we can do further research for verification. Okay, number six. LR is free from grammatical errors. So we teachers, even if we are English teachers, we are not perfect. So there is a possibility to commit errors in spelling or in grammar. Remember that it is considered a mortal sin for English teachers to commit grammatical errors. So we can use the spelling and grammar check in Microsoft Word or there are other online grammar checker, checker rather that we can avail of, okay? So these are the criteria for factor four instructional quality. Next is factor five, the assessment. Okay, criteria number one, the LR provides a useful measure or useful measures and information that help the teacher evaluate learners' progress in mastering the target competencies. In planning this part of your module, always be reminded, or let us always remind ourselves, that this teaching learning process that we are doing, um, using this module is very different from a normal classroom environment. Therefore, let us put our feet on the shoes of our students and remember this criteria, like number one. Number two, assessments are aligned with a specific objective and content. Let us always go back to our learning competency and the objectives that we have constructed. Number three, the LR provides self-checks ready-made achievement tests and or review activities. So if there are activities, there should be a page there for the answer key. Not necessarily after the activity, the answer key or the key answers will be there. It may be in a different page or two pages, uh, um, maybe a part. Okay, number four. The LR provides variety of assessment types. Although in the example of um, Mom Dives, she gave multiple choice type of test, but she also mentioned that you can use other variety of assessment type. Okay. Para di naman pabalik-balik ang multiple choice. Number five, assessments have clear demonstration or examples instructions, and or rubrics to serve as guide on how these will be used. So the instruction should be very clear, like what was mentioned, it should be conversational. It's like you are talking to the students face-to-face -face on what they should do. And they should not be confused on how to do the activity because the instruction is simple and easy to follow. And a while ago, there was a question if they have to provide the rubrics. Yes, the evaluators will be checking on the rubrics that you have provided, especially the points that you are going to give. Right, next. Number six, variety of activities within the LR are utilized to ensure active engagement of the learners. Okay. 
make sure that the students will have no room for confusion and that they will be guided all the way since we will not be around when they do the activities. Okay. So again, instruction should be simple and easy to follow. Let's move on to the last factor for the evaluation tool for content. The last is readability. Number one, vocabul vocabulary level is adopted to target users' experience and understanding. Let us always use, if not always, most often times, use simple terms or otherwise unlock difficulties. Um, it is also good, especially for higher grade levels, to give um, difficult words so as to improve or enhance the vocabulary bank, okay, the vocabulary of our um, students. So they will also be learning new words. But make sure that we will provide meaning to these difficult words. Number two, length of sentences is suited to the comprehension level of target user. Okay, let us not be um, using very long paragraphs or, or reading, reading texts. Number three, sentences and paragraph structures are varied and appropriate to the target user. So let us consider first the fact that we have also slow learners. So let us make sure that they will not be left behind. Number four, there should be logical and smooth flow of ideas within a lesson and from lesson to lesson. So the transition from one activity to the other should be very smooth so as not to confuse our students. And that as also number five, consistently use transitional devices to focus on the main topics and signal a change of topics. So the evaluators will be looking on how good you are in using these transitional devices. And number six, lessons, instructions, and exer exercises, questions, and activities are clear to the target user. Okay. You will be provided anyway with a copy of this evaluation tool. So do not worry because you too will be guided properly. So that's the end of my talk about the evaluation tool for content. Okay. God bless everyone and enjoy writing. Thank you. Sir Mel. Uh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, at this point, content will be discussed by our Actually, very own master teacher one of Davao City National High School. He is also a division resource evaluator. Yes, ma'am, myself. Ako po yung content, uh, mali sa ato ang program. Ah, oh, sige, sige. Okay. Ang layout, ma'am, si Sir Amir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sorry, I stand corrected. Uh, layout will be discussed by our very own Master Teacher One of Dabao City National High School. He is also a division, division learning resource evaluator. Please help me welcome Sir Amir Kasan C. Hasim. Hello, Sir Amir. Hello, good morning to all. Okay. Uh, ready okay. na to ang PowerPoint, Sir Mel. Ikaw yes, sir. Uh, Easy, sir. Okay, wait. Okay, to Ma'am May Anho Muad, our education program supervisor in English, to the core group of this event, um, my co-evaluators as well as speakers, and of course, from our competent uh, pool of writers in the division of Davao City, good morning. So, welcome to this more uh, English module writing based on the most essential learning competence or MEL. Secondary short. Next slide, please. 
Dr. Marl, uh, first uh, aspect of evaluation, which is uh, for which focuses on content, I will be sharing to you some slides on uh, the second, okay, second aspect or aspect of which is um, the content and um, which is the layout and design. Next slide, please. Okay, we have the following objectives. We have four objectives. Allow me to read the four objectives. First is to evaluate the layout and design of the assigned ATM module for compliance with standards of the Department of Education. Second, to write specific comments and findings on the margins of pages of the ADM modules wherein or where adequacies of layout and design are found. The third one, to prepare and submit a report using the prescribed layout and design evaluation tool and summary of findings a template for each assigned module. And the last one is to discuss with the development teams the comments, recommendations, and revision to be implemented on the module or modules if there will be no, if there are needed to be revised. Next slide, please. So um, with that objectives of ours, the roles and responsibilities of evaluators uh, are anchored. So number one is, uh, we actually have three roles and responsibilities. Number one is to evaluate and check the assigned ADM module or modules for physical attributes, design and layout, typographical organization, visuals, and other types of format errors. Second, we are going to write comments and findings on the assigned modules and prepare an evaluation report that shall guide the development team in making needed revisions. And the last one, we are going to discuss with the development team to clarify the comments and findings made on the layout and design of assigned modules. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so again, I mentioned about the time. So we have um, four factors, no? Four factors. Um, the first factor is um, the physical attributes. So under this, we have two criteria or two criterions. So first is the appropriateness of the cover page. Then second is the completeness of required elements. So I do not need to deepen actually the discussion on this uh, criteria because already mentioned by Sir Bon as well as Ma'am Audrey a while ago and actually further clarified by Mantems, no? so they've mentioned already about this different part of um, the module. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the cover page. The cover page must be appropriate, relevant, and interesting. So take a look at this uh, example that I used. We have the, the English uh, LM of uh, the Department of Education. So we have there the cover, uh, the cover art. Uh, they only used, I, I guess, three elements. We have the, the globe, the books, and the, the hands in different colors, no? So they actually tell us what the book is all about or what the, what the module is all about. So as we can see there also, we have the title, uh, diversity, celebrating, Multiculturalism, uh, multiculturalism through world world literature. Okay, so so the hands are in different color, which actually um, represent. Okay, they actually represent uh, the different cultures as well as the books. Also, they represent the different liter uh, literatures of the world. Okay, and then the the globe, which actually represents the world literature. Okay, ne next slide, please. Okay, so we have the following uh, contents or, uh, in the, the cover page. We have to have there, of course, the grade indicator. What uh, uh, we also have there, the learning area. 
Okay, you have to have their own the book type, whether that one is intended for learners or for the teachers. But then uh, we're making a uh, module for the learners. And then we have the cover art. And then we also have the title of the module as well as some step ed text entries. Next slide, please. Okay, the second um, criterion is the what we call, or the, the pages rather, the second page, uh, kind of pages, we have the front matter pages. In the front matter pages, you have to have the title page. Okay, Then you have to have also the copyright page. You have to have the table of contents and you have to have the introduction. So I do not need to explain to you further uh, what those pages are, okay? They are self-explanatory. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, in the introduction, okay, the introduction part, the page numbers are set in lowercase Roman numbers or Roman numerals centered at the bottom of the page and that's it so you have to write the page number uh, the, on the bottom part centered in roman numerals next slide please okay the page numbers are set next slide please okay that's it okay no page numbers for title page and copyright page as you can see, no, uh, balik muna tayo sa Mel doon sa, sa previous uh, slide. As you can see it there, okay, the title page as well as the copyright page, okay, they do not uh, have the so-called page number. Although they are counted as pages, uh, part of the pages, but we do not write there the page number. Okay, next slide. Next, we have the inside pages. So, beginning page of the LR consistently falls on the right-hand page. Sir Mel, ayo sa din ha. Balik sa dita sa sa inside pages. Okay, that's it. So as you can see it there in our example, okay, we have there. Okay. So you can see it there. We have there. Okay, the beginning page of the LR consistently falls on the right page. So wala tay dapat dili siya mag begin on the the left side. Okay, left hand page. So that's why we have the 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 what we call the blank page. Next slide. Okay, then we have the inside pages as well. Okay, pagination is set in Arabic numerals centered at the bottom part. Okay, next slide. For the inside pages as well, spaces between letters, words, and paragraphs facilitate reading. So you have to be very careful in spacing, no? You have to... Um, pay attention. Pay attention with the right spacing now uh, between words, letters, and paragraphs because they facilitate reading. Next, we have the fourth one. Page endings do not end with hyphenated word or an awkward page all avoid uh, having the so cut words then the, um, you have the cut parts of the word on the uh, next page so avoid uh, avoid doing that one and the fifth one is you can have actually a maximum of three hyphenated words in a paragraph okay that's the maximum uh, hyphenated words that will that, that you can have in 
a paragraph. So, more than that, it is disparaged. Next, please. Sir Mel, nasa naman ka? Napata Sir Mel sa ano? Sa back matter pages. Okay. Back matter pages. Okay. So these are the the pages uh, that can be found in the back matter pages. So you have to have the glossary, the bibliography, uh, bibliography, the index, and the appendix. Okay. Next page. Okay, then the second factor is the what we call the design and layout. Under this uh, factor, uh, we have at least four uh, criterions or criteria. We have number one, consistency of elements. So the elements should be uh, under the design and layout should be consistent. So in other words, uh, if um, you are uh, using a certain pattern, that should be throughout your module. Hmm? Hindi yung paiba-iba yung pattern mo na, na you use in your module. So for example, uh, you have the um, headings at the center and then you have it in bold face. So it should be consistent throughout your module. Second is should be simple and attractive. So the, de the design should be again simple and attractive. If at the same time. So it was also uh, already mentioned by, by Mom, De uh, Mom Debs about the sim simplicity and the attractiveness of the design. Then um, the third one is adequacy of illus illustration in relation to the text. So as what uh, Mom, Mom Aubrey mentioned a while ago, uh, we are we should follow the 30% and 70% uh, ratio. No? So 30% for the uh, visual and then um, 70 per, uh, percent text. So, then the fourth one, you have to have the so called uh, harmonious blending of elements. So, it should not be, um, you include a lot of um, uh, drawings, you include a lot of visuals that may sometime, uh, sometimes, sometimes, um, actually confuse the learner. So avoid that one. So make it as much as possible simple. The next slide, please. Okay, so these are examples of those um, uh, criteria. No? So as you can see it there in our example, okay, main, uh, main heads, the subheads, sections, and subsections are consistently classified. Okay, through inventions and uh, the use of the what we call the bold face of the um, the letters or the words. So this is um, actually our example for the consistency of elements. Next slide, please. Okay, design should be simple and attractive. Okay. So in our um, English 10, the LM, as you can see there, we have for the module one cover page, we have there only uh, a hand, uh, which our hands uh, manipulate um, this, um, ano tong game na to? Um, puzzle, uh, puzzle, okay? Then we have the title there, Overcoming Challenges. So this uh, illustration actually explains um, what the title of uh, title is all about. The okay in the module one. Okay, next please. Okay, adequacy of illustration in relation to text. Okay, so. Talking about the adequacy of illustration in, in relation to text, uh, it should not um, uh, include a necessary illustration that may actually confuse the um, uh, user of the module. So as much as possible, 
make it enough but not too much okay not too much that it actually uh, consumes the whole page no for illustration na lang so uh, our module will be then look like um, uh, comics no na puro illustration na lang, illustrations na lang so make it simple as much as possible include only the necessary illustrations the needed illustrations that would somehow explain okay what the text is all about or will help the learners or users understand what the text is all about or what the activity is all about because sometimes we have visual learners uh, who are more on visuals they understand better the, the activity or the text with the aid of the the the, the arts the, the visuals there present in the page slide please. Termel, next slide. Okay, then harmonious blending of elements. And as you can see there in the given example, very simple lang siya, no? Uh, we have there the, uh, I don't know how do you, how do you call this um, this illustration, uh, uh, the bubble thoughts um, illustration. So the uh, illustration should be uh, in harmonious um, blending with the other elements that uh, it, uh, they do not actually uh, uh, kind of harsh to, to eyes that um, um, it creates confusion rather than um, understanding better the activity or the text. Next slide, please. Okay. The third factor is what we call the typographical organization. So under this, we have also criterias to, uh, criteria or criterions to be followed. We have first is the use of appropriate uh, font size and style. So since we have template, so no problem with this. No? So we do not need to um, uh, have uh, the so-called um, um, Font size or style that we will be using because uh, they're already provided by the template that we will be using in our module. Then, second is follow the rules in the use of boldface and italic, uh, italics. Next slide, please. Thank okay. you. Okay, typographical uh, organization. These are suggest uh, suggestions, no? taken from the internet, okay? Appropriate font size and style. Um, you have to consider the purpose, okay? That is for comprehension, for remembering, or for readability of the text. So you have to consider that one. Um, and also the content, okay? So the content, uh, uh, whether that one is for educational, and our purpose is for, I mean, the content of ours is uh, educational not for leisure or informative uh, and others. And then also you have to consider the target readers. So since um, our target uh, readers or users are high school, so we have the the, uh, the, the suggestions, no? Okay, so taken also from the, the internet. Okay, we can actually use uh, the suggestions. So for the body text, we can use 10 to 12. Then according to Ma'am Aubrey a while ago, uh, we use the 11 size or 11 points. Mm -hmm. Then we also have this so-called uh, for the chapter headings. If we use 10 points, then we can have 14 points. Then for the subtitles, we can have 12 points. But if we use 12 points for the body text, we have to have 16 points for the chapter headings. And then we have to have 14 points for the subtitles. Again, let me reiterate that we will be provided with a template. Next slide. Okay. These are just suggestions, no suggestions for uh, the, the font styles that we can use in our module. So for the body, we can use the uh, Baskerville. We can also use the um, the Sabon, we can also use the Cast one or Utopia. 
but I guess uh, according to uh, Mam Aubrey a while ago or Mam Debs a while ago, they mentioned about the use of aerial, Roman, and the Bookman old style. These are just uh, suggestions. Next slide, please. Next slide. Sir Mel, next slide. Next part. Okay, that's it. Okay. Uh, something to remember about some things to remember about the type of uh, typographical organizations in the use of italics and boldface okay remember that the purpose of um, um, the use of uh, italics and boldface is um, lending for lending emphasis uh, to text so if we if we wanted to create emphasis, we can have it in italics or in bold page. That is, uh, for example, we have for the subheadings, headings, mm -hmm. italics and obliques, uh, they actually draw attention without making a major change in the color of the text. So since we do not use uh, colored text, uh, we do only use the black, the black, um, that's the purpose of uh, italics and objects. Italics is used to create subtle emphasis of words and phrases. I've mentioned a while ago that they create emphasis. No? So we wanted to emphasize a certain part of the text, certain part of the, the paragraph. We can have it in in italics uh, form. So we can also use um, italics for foreign words. Next is uh, bold face is often used for captions. So for captions, you have to have it in bold uh, bold face or subheads, standalone words and phrases. So you have to have it in bold face. Phrases. Then the last one is use bold face very harsh for so. For aesthetic purposes, um, we tend to bold face all. It's not actually um, good one because uh, instead of the uh, clear or uh, clarifying the ideas, um, it's harsh actually. On visual, uh, they create visual interruptions. Next slide. Thermal, next slide. Then the fourth one, the fourth uh, factor is the what we call the visual uh, under layout and design. So the visual should supplement the text. Again, supplement the text. Then it should clarify the concept. Okay. Next is it should consistently clear in content and detail. Then should be appropriate to learner's age. So here, okay, we have to be uh, sensitive, sensitive or on biases, no? So for example, the use of, uh, as what Mom Dad mentioned a while ago, yung mga visual that somehow bias uh, in terms of culture, in terms of gender, in terms of um, but um, uh, political affiliation, so you have to uh, double check that one. Okay, you have to really consider this uh, aspect aspect of evaluation. The next one under visual, it should also the visual should also sustain interest and not distract learners' attention. So, so, we tend to overdo sometimes for aesthetic purposes. Kaya ganing daghan kaayong ang mga unnecessary drawings we include in our visuals. So try to avoid that one. So they are not necessary uh, in the text. Okay. 
not do not include uh, that one okay they will just distract the learner's attention second it should be appealing at the same time simple and easy to recognize something that they can relate uh, easily and the, the learners uh, or the users of the the module can, can relate easily according to their grade level and um, that's it okay the next one it should be realistic in news okay especially on the appropriateness of colors no? the, the appropriateness of colors so um there are those who like to use mga uh, um, colors na it seems to be harsh no especially that um, our module will be published online so if you think that color is not appropriate do not use it no? mga uh, harsh on eyes next slide please Okay, another thing about visual is it should set, uh, you, you have to set it in grayscale if original visuals are colored. Why? Because we have it in what, black and white. The tendency is that if you, if you um, tend to use the original uh, picture, which is in color, masyado siyang maitib, okay? Masyado siyang uh, maitim in, in the black and white uh, format. Okay. Then, uh, another thing about visual is people or animals should be facing inside the pages. Okay. So, when we say inside the pages, nakaharap siya. Ha? Nakaharap siya. So, that uh, the user could see really the, the um, uh, features of that uh, person or the, that person or that animal. Next slide. Okay. Um, another thing about visual, it should appropriately placed, okay, again, appropriately placed in the page and proportionally drawn in size. So I've mentioned already about the the percentage of the the visual with that of the the text portion in the page no? so 3070 hindi yung puro na lang visuals okay then the next one is um, use individual pictures uh, picture frames if illustrations are about the process so try to have it in frame especially if the illustration okay are about a process not to create confusion okay the line drawing should not be shaded why why sh it should not be shaded hmm? again going back to the one i mentioned about a while ago about the use of grayscale the tendency is if we actually shade the the line drawings hmm, Pag nasa black and white na siya, tend to be too ano, dark. Next slide. Okay, that's it with the layout and design. To sum it up, to sum all those um, factors and criterions, um, under factor one, we have 11 criterions. Okay, we have 11 criterion uh, items. You need to have at, at least um, eight okay, checks for you to have a compliant um, module. And the second factor, the design and layout, we have there six criterion items and you need to have at least four checks. Then the third And you need to have three checks for you to have um, for you for our module to be considered uh, um, uh, in compliance with the evaluation tool. 
Then the last one, the last factor, we have the visuals. Uh, visuals. We had mentioned there 13 criterion items. And we need to have nine checks. All in all, all how many criterions we, uh, do we have? 11 plus 6. Um, 11 plus 6. Uh, 17 plus Thirteen. We have um, Thirty, thirty, four, uh, thirty-four, thirty-four, uh, thirty-four criterions uh, under the four factors of um, layout and design. So that's it for layout and design evaluation tool. Good morning to everyone. And yes, Sir Mel, we're done with um, um, layout and design. Questions will be entertained after uh, the last speaker. Sir Mel. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Man. Hello. <laughs> Are you man. still there? I'm done. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Now. Okay. Uh, for the presentation of evaluation, hello, sir Amir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir Amir. For the presentation of evaluation tools yes. and. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, si sir, si Ma'am Sheila na. Buhi pa na sila, sir. <laughs> we are still. 54 sa participants. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Again, questions will be entertained let, later. For the presentation of evaluation tools and okay. language, please help me welcome our teacher three from Doña Carmen Denya National High School. She is also a division learning resource evaluator. Please help me welcome Ma'am Shela Alimania. Hello, Ma'am Shea. Hello, good morning. Good evening. Madulog na ka, Sir Ben? Yes, Ma'am. Choppy lang gamay. <laughs> I hope uh, Google, uh, Google Meeting can be sustained, no? Anyway, we will be done in a half day, I think. Right? So, once again, good morning to first our birthday girl, our education program supervisor, from the end of what. Good morning also to our evaluators, our writers, and our educators. Now, this morning, I will be presenting to you the, I'll be presenting to you the evaluation tool for language or language. Right? So, can you see the point presentation for language review? For men, Makita, yeah? Yes, ma'am, Makita. <laughs> okay. All right. Still loading here in Ano na lang ma'am siya, okay man Japan, klaro man. So let's begin. We have here the title of my topic is Language Review Visually Depth and Develop Learning Resources in the Language Governor Evaluation Tool. So let's first with the thought to factor. So I think you know this man. This man said that if you talk to a man in a language, that goes to his head. And if you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. So what does it imply? It tells us as motion writers in this time of pandemic. It tells us that language is crucial in motion writing. And we have to meet the stringent requirements for the writer or for us 
uh, motor writers and evaluators to convey effectively what we want to convey to our learners and also to achieve the objectives of the motor writing. Therefore, we have to make sure that even the great student or a great detail in writing this module can understand what we are writing. Now, there are four components or four errors that the evaluator will be looking into in this in the evaluation of your module. So we have the four components. We have coherence and clarity of thought. We have grammar and syntax. We have spelling and punctuation and consistency and style. So let's begin with coherence or coherence. Uh, either way, they say it. So we have the principle of uh, speaking together. That's for coherence. And these are the questions that we have to answer as you write your module. Number one, do the statements or phrases that you are crafting make sense? And the second one is, do the sentences in the paragraph contribute to one idea? And the third one are the thoughts and ideas logically sequenced. Now, in journalism writing and even in other write shops, the speakers and even those experts in the field of writing will always tell us that before we finalize our thoughts, we have to read it many times. We have to listen to what we are writing and ask ourselves if we can already, if we can understand what we are writing. Now the next one for coherence, we have here the conjunctions and transitional phrases. They must be used to lead sentences or paragraphs. And are the choice of words and the expressions appropriate? Are the sentences too long or complex? Or is the language appropriate for the target readers? I think that's it for coherence and clarity of thought. Next is we go to grammar and syntax. Now in, I think we have this one in our language classes in English in our college days, the principles that we have to remember about syntax. And basically it will tell us about the proper use or the proper choice of words in crafting sentences. So we have to remember the agreement between subject and verb, then we have to observe the correct use of verb tenses. Now for the correct use of verb tenses, if in the portions of what I know, what's in, what's new, and what's more, you will be using stories or other, other passages, you have to remember the principles on when you're going to use those past tense and present tenses. Should there be a portion of which that applies the principle on photojournalism. Remember the principles of captioning. And for the titles of your activities, you have to also remember the tenses. Should you want to use verbs, then use verbs. Should you want to use uh, nouns, use nouns. Now for the verb tenses, of course, in the instruction, it is already inherent. And I think you know it that we have to use it in the base form of the now, we also have to remember this one, the misplaced and badly modifiers. And again and again, we will be writing for our learners. And so we have to simplify the sentences that we are using. Then we have unclear antecedents and agreement between pronouns and their antecedents. Okay. Another one for grammar and syntax, we have to remember about faulty parallel construction. Okay. Again, going back to the titles of your activities, example, there is a portion there that says, uh, what, please, or the portion or the title there of the activity is complete me. So complete, so it's, it begins with the verb. So all the activities that you will be having, the title of the activities that you will be having should start with a verb. And always take note of split infinitives and overuse of certain words, okay? Uh, 
we are discouraging the use of euphemisms and, of course, the use of the high-sounding words because, you know, our learners will be doing it at their own pace. So we have to remember those things. And of course, redundancies, we have their Google, we have the different dictionaries or tools that can help us to substitute the words. But such substitution should not uh, diminish or alter the meaning of the words that you are trying to convey. And then we have redundancies, okay? And of course, for jargons. Now remember that modal writing is a type of formal communication. And should there be jargons, example, in text, like it's, like it's about a scientific text or it's about a text on, um, on other fields or a medical uh, text that talks about medicine, yes, jargons are accepted because uh, these are or these belong to the ESP or English for special purposes or specific purposes. Now, but for the instructions and for the for the rest of the parts of the module, please avoid using jargons and of course the shortcuts or the contractions. So example, the basic uh, principles of cannot, okay, uh, please don't write can't and other things. Then let's move on to spelling and punctuation. So very easy. These are the points that we have to remember. Number one, our words, whether local or foreign, correctly spelled, are the right completion marks in the right places, is the use of serial comma or comma before and or observed. Okay, so that's it for spelling and punctuation. Let's move on to the last portion of this uh, language technicality, which is about consistency, consistency and style. So the first guide question that we have to remember is, where alternative spellings are permitted, was a choice made and used consistently throughout the material? And the second one is the need for the same tense or person observed. And the third one are the rules of capitalization, hyphenation, setting off in italics or both base follow. Right? So those are the questions that we have to remember. Again, these are the four areas that you have to take note as you construct your module. Under the language area, we have coherence and clarity of thought. We have grammar and syntax. We have spelling and punctuation, and we have consistency in style. In closing, this is the sample evaluation tool that we will be using as we evaluate the language aspect of the module. So we have here the, yeah, the title of the module, the writer, the grade level administrator. So we have for the first column, we have the paragraph line or page number in chronological order. And then the second column, we have the brief description of errors, finding their observations. Example, the evaluator will write there, uh, there is an error on grammar and syntax, okay, or a brief description maybe. And then a specific recommendations for improvement. Example, the evaluator will recommend, uh, please substitute or please find for other conjunctions or other transitional devices that will make the ideas flow smoothly. So if there are questions, I think we can just post your questions there in our uh, group chat. That's it for the discussion on the language review. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Ma'am Sheila. Thank you, Paul. Okay, this time, uh, I know some of you have already uh, have an assignment on what competencies are, uh, are you going to make. So let us hear some of these com competencies and those who are assigned to make the module. For the presentation of mil MILKS first, let us have here our teacher one from Mental Comprehensive National High School, 
She is also a division learning resource writer. Ang dami nating writer. Please help me welcome Ma'am Joresi Simafranca. Ma'am Joresi. Good morning, sir. Okay, good morning, ma'am. So good morning. So I'll present my slide first. Not responding, siya. Wait lang for a while. Ma'am, lakasan ng konti yung voice. Okay. Not responding, pati. Wait lang. Signal ata. Hello, Sir Mel. Hello. Hello, hello, ma'am. Sir Mel, do you have the copy of um Resi's ano PowerPoint? Ah, uh, wala ko ma'am. Makuy kopya niya, ma'am. Ah, wala. Okay. Um, siguro option nato is pwede si Resi mag send sa email and then we will proceed with the next uh, presenter. Send na lang niya sa kuwas sa kuwan, ma'am, sa messenger. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Read. Yes, sir. Ma uh, you can send your koan, presentation to sa, sa messenger, ma'am, tapos i-play lang natin mamaya. Okay lang? We will proceed to ma'am Jujane muna, ma'am. Okay lang? Oh, wala na siya. Na si ma'am Jujane. <laughs> <laughs> Jujane! Abti kay kuoy! Nara ka diha. Kasawa na si Resi. <laughs> Sorry for the technical glitches. <laughs> we will proceed to Ma'am Ma'am Jujane Gil Gilbuling Hilbulingo for the inventory of learning resources. Ma'am Jujane, hit it. Abdi kay ko no. Wala ni. Ikaw na gid Jujane. Sige Ma'am, Ma'am Jujane. Makita, sir, makita. Dili pa. Ay, wala gud sa akong ano ba. Wait lang ha. Makita na, Sir Mel. Wala pa. Sir Mel, uh, ikaw, na, ikaw na lang dyan siguro. <laughs> Sige. Sorry, naaman to sa imo, ha. Window. Cancel sa ako. Okay, Ma'am Jujane, okay na? Uh -oh. 
presenting pa, sir. Okay. Ah, sir, uh, pataas, sir. Paliho. Okay, wala ko yung PowerPoint. Ah. Okay, good morning once again. So, I am tasked by our apps, Mami Ann, to do the inventory of learning materials, learning resources. So, uh, I am instructed that uh, I should go or rather check on the modules from the LRMDS and from the Division Formative Worksheets modules. And so I found uh, nine total modules that could probably be a perfect reference uh, for us in writing our modules. But of course, these are just reference modules. These are not meant to be copied entirely. Uh, uh, later, uh, you, you, we will know because Ma'am Ma Janice will explain to us on plagiarism. So I found uh, two modules uh, for grade seven uh, on this competency. Use the appropriate reading strategies to meet one's purpose on scanning, skimming, and close reading, and etc. This is from the Division Formative Worksheets written by Ma'am Ceci Ragul. And, Sir Mel, na ako makita sa baba. Okay. The evaluators are not indicated as well as the illustrator is not indicated. So, I think if Ma'am Ceci is uh, listening, I hope she can send me the names of the evaluators as well as the uh, illustrator. Uh, up, Sir Mel. Another uh, uh, competency uh, which I have found uh, perfect for uh, reference. This one is from the grade 8 module, but uh, the same competency with grade 7. I think we will we'll just have to be very careful in targeting the level of uh, the, the difficulty of the level of difficulty of our students. So we have to target the uh, uh, appropriate uh, activities or tasks for the grade seven level. So this is on trans, uh, this, the competency is transcode information from linear to nonlinear texts and vice versa. Uh, okay, from Ma'am Ceci Ragul, ako daw, o si Ma'am Aristin, ang, ano, ang evaluator. So, balik sa Sir Mel, pospos kay ka, ay. This one is written by Ma'am Donna Kristen, Christine Velches. Okay, also, not indicated ang evaluator. I think it's Ma'am Aristin and I, or maybe Ma'am Dibilin. Uh, and the illustrator, illustrator also is not included. But take note that this is for... Ang, ang module ni Ma'am Christine is for grade 8 level. Okay. Siguro, I, you can just uh, see the uh, activities and tasks that are used there, but uh, take note of the, the, the level. Uh, Sir Mel, next, please. Inugapi. <laughs> Yipa, sir. Grade 8 na ka, sir. Okay. Ano, sir? For grade 8 level, I found one for this uh, competency. Determine the meaning of words and expressions that reflect the local culture by noting context clues. Uh, the, the, the module that I have found is not exactly the same uh, or with this competency. However, the, the one that I have found written by Ma'am Sheila Alimania from the distance learning module uh, this one focuses on context clues. So I took chances, maybe, or somehow, this module can help our writers, or especially the one assigned to this competency. So the module of Mam Sheila was evaluated by Mam Dibelin, and the illustrator is Mam jo Ivory Joanne Tambala. Next, Sir Mel. Not lang na mga highlight. Okay. This one is uh, from the Division Formative Worksheets on this competency. Use appropriate 
uh, cohesive devices in various types of speech. But uh, in this module that I have found, the focus is only on the informative speech. So still, uh, I, I included this one, uh, hoping that this can help our writer. This is written by uh, Ma'am Irene Akiatan. The evaluators are not indicated, but um, I think it's Ma'am Dibilin, Ma'am Aristine, uh, uh, I, are the evaluators. Uh, the illustrator for this is Sir Rovik Akiatan, the husband of the writer. Uh, next po. And uh, he is one of our... Uh, balik, Sir Mel. Ay, taas na, Sir Mel. One of our illustrators in this. Uh, okay, another one. Uh, this one is exactly the same with the module of Ma'am Sheila Alemania. Uh, evaluated by Ma'am Dibilin. Illustrated by Ma'am Ivory, so Antambala. I, I found this one from the distance learning module of the Davao City LRNBS. This is on this competency. Use appropriate grammatical signals or expressions suitable to each pattern of idea development. And these are the sub-competencies or the, the areas that we're going to focus on. Next po, Sir Mel. Okay, for grade nine, okay, for grade nine, I only found uh, three. One is on this one. Uh, express permission, obligation, and prohibition using modals. This one is from the distance learning module written by Sir Bonifacio Pajarillo, evaluated by Ma'am Dibilin, and illustrated by Ma'am Joan Tambala. In this module written by Sir Boni Pajarillo, the focus is on the modals that expresses futurity and willingness. Uh, however, he also included some on uh, modals that expresses permission, obligation, and prohibition. So uh, I included this one still hoping that uh, our writer, or this can help our writer. Next one. Uh, uh, use conditionals in expressing arguments from the division formative worksheets. Ask my sermon. I think this is written by Ma'am Anna. Sige pag my sermon. Anna Angelica Bautista from Santa Ana National High School. This one is evaluated by Ma'am Aristin and uh, yours truly. And but the illustrator is not indicated. Next talk. Another one, uh, this module is written by Ma'am Joresi Simafranca. I found this from the distance learning module of the Davao City LRN, LRMS. This is about uh, this competency. Employ the appropriate communicative styles for various situations. Intimate, casual, conversational, consultative, and frozen. This is uh, evaluated by Ma'am Dibilin. Ask the my sermon and illustrated by Ma'am Jo Antambala. For grade nine, I have only found one. This is written or this is from the division formative worksheets. Sermel, pataas sermel. Grade ten sermel. Uh, the the module is written by Ma'am uh, Justine de los Reyes. Murag sa last part na Sir Mel. Ana. Written by Ma'am Justine De Los Reyes. Evaluators, wala na indicate. Illustrator is Lee Winmer M. Joven. I think sa, sa ano ni siya. Uh, outside ng uh, illustrator. This is about the uh, this the competency is give technical and operational definitions. So, uh, those are only the available modules that I will upload after this in our GC. So, I hope this can help our writers in uh, writing their modules. Thank you very much and good morning once again.
Thank you, Ma'am Jujane. Welcome, sir. Hmm, kulang pa itong module, no? I'm not a writer, sir. Ah, uh, ma'am, question. If you are a module writer and you have developed module, this cannot be sold, no? Of course. Okay. All modules are owned by the department. Yes. Okay. Okay, next is... Uh, this time, this is a very important topic because some of our writers, especially uh, senators also, were bullied because they wrongly mis in um they wrongly interpreted some of their lines and presented during their speech and they are bullied because they copied materials of someone wrongly referenced by them so please help me welcome to discuss about the concepts of plagiarism and intellectual property rights she is a master teacher too of Tug Tugbok Central Elementary School. She is also a division learning resource writer. Please help me welcome Ma'am Janice Abria. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ma'am. Thank you, Sir Mel. My task is to explain to you about the concepts of uh, intellectual property rights and also plagiarism. So let me start. Okay, as writers, we have to be very careful not to violate any intellectual property rights. So how do we know that we are not violating the IPR? Our manuscript, in our case, our ADMs, should observe proper acknowledgement and respect to whom the intellectual property right is due, and it should be free from copyright infringement. Now, what is a copyright? It is a legal means of protecting an author's work. It is a type of intellectual property that provides exclusive publication, distribution, and usage rights for the author. There are many different types of content that can be protected by copyright, and this includes books, Poems, plays, songs, films, and artwork. And of course, our ADMs are also protected by this copyright. Now, what is copyright infringement? How do we know that we already violate the copyright? It happens when references are not complete and the references are not accurate. If the illustrations and drawings are not original and there is no evidence of permission. And that's the reason why in making our ADMs, we need the help of our illustrators. We need to include illustrations that are really original. So the drawing should be original and not only taken from the internet. And that's where the illustrators come in very valuable in putting together our ADMs. Now, there are actually available illustrations in the LRMDS portal that we could use. They were previously used in uh, ADMs or DLMs created by the LRMDS, and we can actually use that because we have the same purpose, which is to use the ADMs. Uh, in, uh, and they, they will be distributed in the division of double CP. So we can use them if they are uh, quite um, appropriate for the ADM that you are going to make. And if we are short of illustrators already. So photographic images, they are, not, they are not referenced. They also infringe the copyright. So you have to add references based on uh, the source where you have uh, taken a particular text, photo, or illustration, and hoping that this illustration will not be taken from any other sources, but we should make our original one. Now, if it's on the internet, is it free? Can we use them? Is it safe to put them on our ADMs because uh, we would really need the help of the internet. We have to take resources from the internet in putting together our modules, right? Now, there are some issues with accuracy, authenticity, and integrity, and also origin, especially if you take the content from blogs, wikis, tweets, and Facebook. 
there are uh, posts in these sites that are not really reliable and it is not appropriate material for government educational publications such as our ADMs. They may not be reliable sources of factual information and content. As we all know, there are proliferation of fake news. So we must be very careful in choosing the resources that we take from the internet. And hopefully we should avoid all these four web contents. Now, in uh, referencing the internet sourced uh, text or photos, you have to make sure that you write the URL address and not google.com. Okay, you have to be very specific. Just copy the URL and you have to add that in your references. Uh, it's found on the last part of the ADM, right? And you also include that in the text itself or the photo that you have used. In what particular part of the ADM are you going to use that? Include the URL. You also copy the URL at the reference part. Now, for modified materials, they still retain the integrity of the original work. So meaning we need to still attribute the original, that material to the original author, even if you modify that. Now, what are the different ways of modifying a material? It can be, uh, it's not limited to updating of content, adding more recent examples, adding activities or worksheets. If you do these modifications, it doesn't mean that it becomes yours already and you may not reference the material anymore. That's not true. If you add modifications, you still attribute that material to the original author. Now, what is recon recontextualizing? It means to place or use the original material within a few contexts. So for example, you change, you contextualize the material by changing the um, uh, apple, for example, into a local fruit. So even if you recontextualize the material, it still remains the property of the original author, okay? So we move on to plagiarism. Plagiarism means the theft of another person's language, thoughts, or ideas. When you plagiarize, you take ideas, writings, and others from another and pass them off as one's own. So you take something that's not yours. That's plagiarism. What are the different types of plagiarism there are two we have intentional and unintentional plagiarism we start with the intentional plagiarism it means copying problem answers from a classmate that's an example copying an essay from a student in the previous year downloading an essay from the internet creating an essay by copying from three different textbooks and linking the parts together with your own words now even if you put them together and somehow it looks different because it came from different sources and then you add your name to it that's still plagiarism okay so that's intentional plagiarism now what is unintentional plagiarism when you fail to indicate that some text is a direct quote so meaning there is a quotation mark on your text and then you do not include the attribution part no? for journalism advocates they, of course, know that when there is a direct quote, there is always an attribution, meaning who said those words, who mentioned those exact words. You have to make sure to indicate the name of that person. That's uh, attribution. Paraphrasing a chapter and including the source in the reference list, but not acknowledging the source in the text. So this is what I mentioned earlier, that when you uh, reference the source, you do not only write that in the reference part, you also include that in the text, whether you add that in page number five of your module. So you already have to acknowledge the source in that page aside from writing that in the reference part. Composing a paragraph by joining sentences from a number of sources together and not acknowledging the sources in the text. So we might have unknowingly done these things. So that's still plagiarism. It's unintentional plagiarism, but it's still plagiarism. And there is liability when you commit this. There's a criminal penalty 
any person infringing any right secured by provisions of Part 4, the Law on Copyright of this Act, or aiding or abetting such infringement shall be guilty of a crime punishable by imprisonment of one year to three years plus a fine ranging from 50 to 150,000 pesos only for the first offense. So we are not only bringing our name, but we are bringing the, the name of our own division. So hopefully, no one from our group of writers will uh, violate and uh, commit to this criminal penalty. So I hope that we will, of course, preserve all rights, all copyrights. We have our own right because we will become writers. We will create our own content. It will be respected also. So we have to respect the copyright of other authors and main sources. So that's it for copyright infringement and plagiarism. Good luck to us all. And I would just like to add something because uh, with the approval of our uh, EPS, Doc May Ann Humuad, I have actually shown her, showed her some uh, uh, examples of the output that we have uh, created last 2019. We have written several um, DLNs from uh, with the guidance of the LRMDS, and of course, uh, my respect, of course, to, to my uh, evaluator, on Devlin Rodriguez, who helped me a lot. And your evaluator is, of course, going to be very, very helpful in guiding you to writing your own module. So uh, this format was presented previously by other speakers. Now, uh, Doc Humuad said that we will have our uniform illustration for this particular cover. The first cover, uh, the one with uh, this one with for mathematics, we will have our own illustration. We will um, ask one of our illustrators to create a uniform illustration according to how many people that change will have uniform illustration for the elementary and the secondary. And then for the third page, this one, if you can see this part, it has no illustration, right? We are going to, uh, the writer will be the one to provide an illustration in this portion. No? So uh, again, uniform illustration for this part, for the first, very first page, that's the, the main cover. And then individual illustration based on the writer. The writer will be the one to decide on the illustration for this portion. Now this is an example of the... Uh, Cover illustration for this is uh, this is for the distance learning modules that we have made last 2019. So as you can see, there is a uniform cover. This was um, uh, illustrated by one of the best illustrators in, in the division of WCP under the LRMDS. So we will have this cover. Of course, we will adopt light blue being the standard color for English. And then, this is how it looks. It's When it's bound, you can see when you open the page, of course, you can find the individual modules inside. And that's where the writer will decide what illustration will be included in your uh, own module. So this is the example of the illustration I have asked my illustrator, illustrator Mom Ivory Joan Tambala, to make for my four of the modules that I have made last year. This is the distance learning module. So this is how it should look like. So you have to decide as the writer what will be your uh, illustration in the front cover. That's the third page, no? And uh, usually you. What I do is I just, um, whatever is the illustration I use for the literature base of my module, that will be the main illustration of my own ADM. So that's it. Good luck to all our writers. Uh, Ms. Janice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Janice. Uh, yeah. I would like to acknowledge you. Thank you very much uh, for opening this up to me uh, just before we uh, you talk. No, 
Um, I would like to inform Sir Mel. Sir Mel, are you there? Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, since yeah, you're yeah. the consolidator, Sir Mel, uh, I would suggest that you will be the one in charge in getting the standardized illustration. So as I said, uh, Ms. Janice told me a while ago that uh, I actually tasked her to just ask somebody, I think Ivory, Ms. Janice, no? To, yes. to write or to draw an illustration for the standardized illustration of the uniform ano, um, module. Diba we have a, a standardized cover, Sir Mel? Yes, ma'am. So Based that, from the template, ma'am. Oh, oh, yes. So we are going to have a standardized illustration for everyone. So every grade level, there will be a standard illustration for the um, major cover. And then the content of that will be an individual illustration from the different topics that will be written by our writers. So ikaw na mag-extract, Sir Mel, sa, ano, sa, oh, sa yes, illustration. Miss Janice will provide it for us because she will be asking Ivory to make the illustration for the standard cover. Okay, agreed. Okay. Yes, so, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Janice. Uh, I will be approving the design later. If you submit now, Miss Jans, I will just approve the 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 illustration, the standard illustration. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, last year we have lots of competencies to fulfill. This time. The competencies are shortened due to the number of school days and the fact that we, are, we will going to start our online, offline, and modular instructions. The competencies are, again, are, are, are lesser by numbers. To present us the most essential learning competencies, please help me welcome once again, Ma'am Jorese Sima Pranka. Good morning, Sir Mel. Good morning. Good morning, ma everyone. So sorry for the technical difficulty a while ago. So anyway, Sir Mel will be presenting my slides. Okay, yes, ma'am. Wait. Window. Bakit wala? Try na ko din ni Sir Mel sa ako, sir. Hindi ko maklose. <laughs> ah, sige, try na ko din ni sa ako, sir, ha? Ah. Ah, na na, ma'am. Okay ah, na, ma'am. Okay, sige. Thank you, Sir Mel. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so we actually have two versions of the milks, and that it was uh, the new version was released last week. So this is now the new version of the most essential competencies for secondary English. And in the new version, next slide, Sir Mel. In the new version, they've provided us the briefer, which serves as a guide on understanding and using the MELCs. So originally, we have our CG. We have our CG, the May 2016 edition. So with the new normal that we are facing today, the department through the Bureau of Curriculum Development, Curriculum Standards Development Division introduced the MELCs. This is done to ensure that grade level standards are still achieved despite the shortened academic year. So next slide, Sir Mel. Thank you. The LCs and MELCs are carefully chosen, taking in mind the endurance criterion. The LCs are useful in lifelong learning. Now, as teachers in the field, the role of English subject is responsible on the literacy and oracy skills necessary in learning content knowledge in other subject area. With that, the MELCs are in close association with other competencies in other subjects so that the quality of integration is maintained. Now, since we have less number of competencies in the MELCs, here are the factors in 
determining the milks. First one, just like our CG, it follows the spiral progression. Um, next, Sir Mel. Meaning to say, LC deemed significant enough to repeat shall only recur in the next key stage while observing spiral progression. So we have four key stages. We have the grade three, grade six, and then grade 10, and then the senior high. Next one, the LCs also come in clustered. So unpacking and subtasking on the part of the teacher so that the bigger or broader LCs may be broken down into manageable subcompetencies. So Mamja Jane discussed this one during our module writing write shop. So the unpacking and the subtasking of the competencies. Take in mind that the, that the MELCs no longer use the domains. So as you can see, they only have the quarter number and then the LCs. This is because in the CG, it follows a horizontal alignment, wherein one lesson does not only focus on one skill but multiple skills. The MELCs, on the other hand, um, if organized by column, just like our original CG, it would present an incomplete document and may cause confusion among end users, which is us teachers. Also, in the LCs, which I will be presenting later, the time allotment can be suggestive in nature. Meaning to say, the teacher is given the autonomy to unpack the MELCs depending on the needs of the learners, as long as the competencies can be achieved for a specific grade level. Next slide, Sir Mel. Now, here is uh, steps on how you can use the MELC. So the teacher is advised to reteach certain competencies needed for their achievement because it follows a spiral progression. Next, Sir Mel. It is also recommended that the teacher unpack the MELCs into more specific learning competencies as guided by the original 2016 English Curriculum Guide because the MELCs are clustered together so it can be unpacked and given sub-competencies. So here is an example on how we can unpack the competencies in our MELCs. So this one is from grade seven, quarter four, four. Employ a variety of strategies for effective interpersonal communication in like interview dialogue and conversation. So here are the sub competencies. If you'll trace it on your CG, you can actually find the sub competencies from our CG. Uh, Sir Mel, please go, Sir Mel. So we have here the use of different listening strategies. That is quarter three LC. Next one, determine the tone, mood of the speaker or characters in the narrative listened to. That is quarter two LC or listening comprehension. Determine the intentions of speakers by focusing on their unique verbal and nonverbal cues. So that's from quarter four, LC Steele. Next, predict the outcomes of verbal exchange listened to and their possible effects on the speaker. So Steele, quarter four, LC. Lastly, listen for important, uh, wait lang Sir Mel, balik tayo. okay. Listen for important point signals signaled by volume projection Speech, stress, intonation, juncture, and rate of speech. So that's from quarter one LC. All these sub competencies are from the original curriculum guide, 2016 edition. Okay, next, Sir Mel. Now, in our MELCs, we are given the curriculum implementation and learning management matrix. For English, it is from page 113, grade 7 to 114, up until 117. So that is where we can find our 
milks. Lastly, it is recommended that the teacher unpack the milks into more specific learning competencies as guided by the original 2016 English Curriculum Guide. So everything should adhere to the e existing curriculum standards of the Department of Education. So for grade seven, I think the writers, if they've already seen the memo, I think the writers already know their assigned learning competencies. So for the grade seven, the grade level standards, the learner demonstrates communicative competence through his or her understanding of Philippine literature and other text, text types for a deeper appreciation of Philippine culture. So here are the MELKs for grade 7. Next, Sir Mel. I'll just have a run-through of the competencies. So for quarter 1, that's the first set of MELKs. Next, Sir Mel. Next, Sir. So, quarter two. These are the milks for quarter two. Continue, Sir Mel. Quarter three. So as you can see, we only have two columns for our milks. The first column indicates the quarter, and then the second is the learning competency. There is no column for time allotted or the duration of or the week number for each competency. That is because the teacher teachers are given the autonomy to unpack the milk. So you'll have to unpack it, give some sub-competencies. Sub and now we have the grade level standards for grade 8. The learner demonstrates communicative competence through his or her understanding of Afro-Asian literature and other text types for a deeper appreciation of Philippine culture and those of other countries. Continue, Sir Mel. So first quarter, these are the most essential competencies for grade 8. Continue, sir. Quarter 2. Quarter 3. Quarter 4. And then we have the grade nine. Grade nine grade level standards, the learner demonstrates communicative competence through his or her understanding of British American literature, including Philippine literature and other text types for a deeper appreciation of Philippine culture and those of other countries. Now, this is what I did for grade nine uh, LCs. I'm quite familiar with grade nine LCs, that's why I've managed to trace it to our original CG. So this is what I did. So for quarter one, these are the competencies. If I'll trace it to the CG, express permission, obligation, and prohibition using modals. Next, Sir Mel. That is found in fourth quarter, I think. Grammar, yes. That's grammar quarter four. Use conditionals, that's grammar quarter two. Employ the appropriate communicative styles, that's vocabulary development, quarter two. In the MELKs as well, uh, there are slight changes from the original CG. Uh, let's take this example. Um, employ the appropriate communicative styles. In the CG, the... It, the original verb used is give, and then they changed it to employ. So there are slight changes. Next, Sir Mel. 
Another one, we have this one, our, our reading comprehension that's found in quarter four. So from the CG, it should be relate text content to, and now for the MELCs, they changed it to make connections. But somehow, it's still similar. And then we have this new one, the VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world. world. So that's new. They've added that one in the MELCs. Now, this one is very helpful for writers. I did not, uh, I did not use it for all the grade levels because I believe that for writers it would be better if you trace the C the competencies in the CG uh, by yourself because in that way you'll be familiar with other competencies. That might be a sub-competency of your, of the LC assigned to you. So, makascan mo sa mga competencies. So, now let's have quarter four. So, reading comprehension that's found in quarter four. Listening comprehension found in quarter four as well. Next, Sir Mel. So again, they've had minor change. The verb listen was changed to react. Now we have the grade level standards for grade 10. The learner demonstrates communicative competence through his or her understanding of literature and other text types for a deeper appreciation of word literature, including Philippine literature. So let's have a run through of the competencies. So that's for quarter one. Now we proceed to quarter two. And we have quarter three. And lastly, we have quarter four. Okay, so that would be all for the presentation. Now, as a conclusion, um, we cannot really totally do away with our original CG. Our CG can still guide us to look for sub-competencies which might be helpful in unpacking our LC. So just like the example shown to you a while ago for grade 7, they've actually unpacked the LC using the sub-competencies taken from the CG. And lastly, as you can see, there's no time duration or week as to how many days we would be discussing that certain LC. That's because teachers are given the autonomy on how we can design the lesson. So if it, depending on the needs of the learner. So if it needs like a week, then it would be a week. So the teachers will decide. As long as at the end of the school year, um, learners can meet the grade level standards which is prescribed by the Department of Education. So that would be all. Thank you so much, Sir Mel. Thank you, Ma'am Juresi. That was Ma'am Juresi discussing about most essential learning competencies for secondary. Okay. Hello, choppy ko. <laughs> Hello. Okay, Sir Mel, okay lang. Ah, okay, okay lang. So, salamat. Okay. Uh, May mga competencies doon na listening and watch. Magkakaproblema tayo since we, we cannot have a face-to-face -face discussion with our teachers. And I think last, last Monday, our president discouraged us to have a face-to-face -face discussion with our, with our students. So my discussion is not a module related since our topic today is making our module. Diba ba na siya? So ako ah, is is an al alternative kay siguro uh, second week of June 1 we will be asked how about those 
willing to buy cell phone gadgets and they have laptops. How about those who have internet? Kaya di ba, gipasurvey man ta last time, those who can have the face-to-face -face discussion, modular discussion, those who have gadgets, and those who have internet. So, ang ako ang discussion is the, combina the, the combination of those who have gadgets, who have laptops, and those who have those who have internet at home. So my discussion is all about Kotobi, uh, Kotobi learning. Okay, so I'm going to discuss about Kotobi. So I think some of you have heard and practiced already this Kotobi. So last April, uh, the our region region dep ed speakers about ICT discuss about the goodness of this Kotobi. So Kotobi is an interactive ebook. Usually atong ebook is from Microsoft Word, you convert na to into siya PDF. So PDF is already a an ebook. But Kotobi is different because you are go, you can combine audal discussion as well as visual discussion meaning you can pre-record your discussion at your most convenient. Pwedeng sa bahay, may, may, meron kayong chalkboard, pwede rin doon sa tablet, record niyo, tapos i-embed niyo doon sa inyong PDF. So ang PDF, magiging combination siya ngayon ng recording mo na sound, pwede rin video mo na nagturo, at saka resources from YouTube and other websites. So this is an example. So ano ang kailangan sa isang Kotobi Maker na katulad natin. You need to download Kotobi Author. Next is Kotobi Reader. Ano yung Kotobi Author? You are going to make your module in, in the application that you are going to download. That is Kotobi Author. Then Kotobi Reader naman, doon mapiplay yung output ninyo na lesson, yung interactive na. Okay, so ang Kotobi ay pwede sa smartphone na Android at saka iOS, pwede rin sa laptop or desktop, pwede rin sa, pwede rin siya sa tablet. At ang importante nito, you can open the Kotobi reader even without the internet. Okay, so next is... Okay, ayan siya. So, it can be played using iOS or Android devices. Okay, so where can we download our Kotobi Reader and Output? Go to www.kotobi.com slash English. Okay, so these are the compatible platform that your Kotobi can be opened. Android, iPhone, iPad, Windows Phone can be open to your desktop, HTML5 or LMS. Okay, next. So this is an example of a Kotobi. Ang Kotobi ko na ito. Can you see it? Wait lang. Hello? Am I still in? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sample ito ng mga e-book na, na nakakotobi. Marami nang gawa ang mape. May ginawa na rin ang English at saka science, math. Uh, marami na rin English, kaya lang hindi ko siya na-download. Okay, so I'll give you an example of what is, an out, what is a uh, example ng output ng kotobi. Okay. So window. Wait lang. Okay, this is my example of Kotobi. Ito siyang me and my world. Uh, lesson siya ng grade 4. Uh, first week, I think, uh, day 1 and day 2. Okay, please wait. Tagal siya mag-open. 
Okay. So, meron tayo dito ang table of contents. And in the table of contents, chapter 1, me and my world is included. Objectives, instructional material, oral language are, are placed there. Mopa. Palo pa rin tayo so ano yung ginawa natin sa mod gagawin nating module based from the template of Ma'am Janice. So if you click next, ayan siya my lesson. So sa libro drawing is siya, siya dito, dito nakalagay. For this one, i-click ng bata yung logo. Lalabas yung picture. Okay? So ha, ito siya doon sa libro is hindi siya colored, naka black and white. Sa Kotobi, you have the freedom to place picture. Copyright ha, please. Itong picture, galing ito siya sa isang site, uh, you can download for free and the, and the copyright is, is not questionable. Meaning you can download. As long as you place uh, the site as your re reference, following the APA format. So, colored ang picture, tapos dito mag answer ang bata. So, ang advice, I-screenshot na lang yung sagot ng bata. I-send ng bata doon sa messenger. Okay, next activity. May nakalagay doon sa libro na tell us something about yourself. May, may mga linya dito doon sa libro. Pero dito, ginawa ko siyang interactive. So, i-click ng bata yung picture. Tapos, may nakalagay dito. So, tell me something about yourself. Magta-type ang mga bata dito. Natabunan siya ng sub-sharing dito sa akin. So, dito niya ta-type, tapos send it to the teacher. So, the teacher will receive their answer through, their, through the teacher's email address. So, dito naman, meron siyang PowerPoint. Ay, kaya lang, hindi ko alam kung maririnig ninyo. Uh, I, I made this power video presentation using PowerPoint. I inserted my voice. Narinig niyo ba ang boses? Wala. Ma'am Debs, my boses? My sounds? Okay. Ang instruction is listen and compare. So, math plus E equals mate. Okay. So sa Kotobi, kompleto pa rin lahat yung mga competencies natin including the listening skill, ay yung skills pala kompleto, listening skills at saka uh, video presentation or movie presentation. So it, ito siyang Kotobi is somewhat para ka pa rin nagtuturo, kaya lang the, the, the student can repeat the whole lesson uh, lifetime. Kaysa, kaysa doon sa module natin, text saw siya base at wala din yung boses doon sa, sa module. So, ito yung kaibahan ng Kotobi. Kaya lang, as of now, Kotobi is giving us a 60-day trial. So, siguro naman matatapos natin from June to July yung 60-day trial. So, ang ginawa ako, nalampas ako ng 60 days, Umulit ako ng kumuha ng license doon sa Kotobi using another email account. So you can extend for another two months for your Kotobi licensing. So again, ang focus po natin ngayon sa paggawa ay ang module. This is just an alternative for those who answer the survey about uh, learning from you using online resources or uh, lessons using a smartphone. So that's all. May pagpipilian po tayo. Again, ang output po natin is submit sa ating mga evaluators ay hindi po Kotobi, kundi po ang ating module based from the discussion of our uh, LRMDS evaluators following again the copyright law. Okay, marami pong salamat. Okay. So that's all for this. Oh, wait. Ma'am Humuwa do has something to say? Where's my script? <laughs> okay, Sir Mel, Sir Mel, excuse yes, me. Sir Mel, you can you can read the questions. Diba? They are there are questions a while ago. Um yes, please read the questions and address those questions to the the presenters. 
Okay. Uh, one of the question, I think this was addressed to Ma'am Ma Debbie. Ma'am Debs, ang tanong po ni Ma'am Jam, kung ilalagay ba ang ang competency code kasi yung sa example walang competency competency code Ma'am Devlin Ah yes sir. Uh -oh. uh, maganda kung may competency code. Or kung walang competency code. Ah uh, si Mamaya na lang ang tanungin natin kung ano ipalagay niyo or hindi. Sa akin it's not a problem. Or, what was the question again sir Mel? Ma'am sa sample kanina ipalagay sa sa yung sa objectives doon sa module ma'am kasi yung example objective siya pero wala siyang competency code should we include ah, competency okay i would appreciate code? yes yes mas maganda if there is a competency code so i-search na lang nila doon sa ano sa sa CG uh -huh. yung code okay. okay another question ma'am from ma'am Jacqueline Balakinto uh, can we use content topics like covid-19 hmm. sure sure Exactly, Happy. sir. Pwede uh, kaayong, sir. Actually, pag junior, pag, pag stage 3 siya and stage 4, dapat na ay mga informational text. But again, mm. kung kukuha tayo ng mga COVID-related text, dapat uh, sa mga reliable source. Kay Basing, ang mga sources ato, dili siya mauno, so mag-create siya o misconception about COVID-19. Mm, relatable po siya, ma'am. No. Yes, pwede kaayong, sir. I think uh, some are not typing their questions. Don't you have questions? <laughs> if, if ilalagay po ang competency code, iba kasi ang nasa CG, magbari na po ang quarter. Tanong po ni Ma'am Rimulta, Ma'am, ni Ma'am Joy. Sir Mel, for the, M for the MELCs kasi, sir, there's no competency code. Quarter uh, lang ang given. Although CCG guide lang siya to unpack or to give sub competencies. So, magkaroon siya confusion. Tama ang yung grace na ano. Ma'am Ann. Yes, yes, Ma'am Del. Kung wala na siya sa MELC, wala na siya sa CODI, pwede dilit na lang natin. Ah, okay. O kung wala na siya, res, res. Yes, ma'am. Ikaw man ang ikaw man na naka-search good no. So, there, sa MELCs na to, there is no specific LC talaga na kalagay no. Well, like There's no code, code and all. Uh, oh, okay, code, sige. So, we will not require them. We will not require them to put the code if it's not available. Maybe uh -oh. i ano na, na siya. Uh, we are still waiting for the central office to provide us the code. Kay ang other subject areas na sila like code actually. Ang science oh. na sila. Yes, uh -oh. so, kailang, we, uh -oh. we will wait for them. Okay. Kailang, we will wait for the central office to give us the codes. Okay. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Uh, how are we? Going? Sir Mel. Yes, ma'am. I question dili from ma'am Justine. Nakita na ako. Oh yes, ma'am. Ma uh, ma in. Okay. in the case of those who would develop a module with listening or speaking competencies. How are we going to materialize the oh, you know. <laughs> The fact that not all of our learners have the access to internet. Uh, okay, are you still with me? Yes, ma'am. sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, always remember that ADM, uh, that ang milk, inguni ma'am may antaganina, is not only for COVID-19. Ang milk na prepare na na nila prior to COVID-19, right? Yeah. Now, we are asked to write ADMs. Okay. So, ang ADM po kaganina, pag story sa akong introduction is, dili lang niya kahit na ay pandemic. Ang ADM could be used, students nga na dito enroll, students nga anak. So, una-una-una ito una, nga, ang ADM, dili lang ni para karun ka na ay COVID. Kung dili, even after COVID, kami magamit ka to ang ADM. No, uh, Ma'am Debs, yes, sir. how about those listening uh -oh. or speaking competency? How, how are we going to materialize that one? Yes. So, kung listening and speaking na ta, so pwede ta mag-print module o non-print. So, ang atong historyahan diri is print module. So, naatay mga criteria. Pag non-print gani, just like Kotobi, PowerPoint, Slideshow, and others, 
ang tawag ato ay non-print. Napo na siya ilahang criteria. So, uh, kinahanglan, as writers, di ito mahimong katawanan ha, nga ang speaking, wala nagpa-speak, di pa basa. Ang listening, di pa basa, wala di pa listen. So, uh, at ang i-decide kung ang atong module, makaya ba i-print or in print So, for example, sa listening. So, again ha, dili lang ni kay na ay pandemic ka, magamit diya ni siya in the future. So, for example, uh, sa listening, pwede ni mo ihatag ang link. As naman ang link ato sa YouTube, or naaka dito'y uh, gibasa ba ni mo ang story, gipost ni mo sa YouTube. So, mauto siya ang link na ihatag ni mo dito sa module, pwede mang gihapo na siya. Okay? Or uh, sa speaking, for example, speaking activity na niya, dili mo dito siguro no, nga pag-start sa imuhang first activity, nagpa-speak na ka. Or kung ang imuhang uh, uh, application activity is for example, deliver a speech and prior to that, naghatag ka mga preliminaries nga dili mo story ang bata. And then pag-abot ang anak ng activity ka, dili mo dito pwede nga dili mo nito siya ipaspeak. Kaya mao mang dito siya ang imuhang uh, ang imuhang major competency Pwede ni mo ibutang dito nga, the student, uh, dili, you are going to deliver a speech, ana, 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 and then arrange with your teacher for a face-to-face -face session. Nga, butangan ni mo note dito, but during a pandemic, okay, this activity can be suspended or this, can, this activity can be replaced with another activity that is possible for the student and the teacher. Kaya nga naman, mag-deliver og speech. Yung ngayon day si bata, ma'am, pwede good ko, naman ni internet, ma'am, pwede na ko i-video niya, i-send na ko sa imo ha. Which could, which could also, which is also viable. So, pag listening and speaking, uh, gamitun jud na to ang ato ang creativity. Katong gistorya ni Sir Mel, maugit to siya ang best option for listening and speaking. Kanya, maghimo tag ko tobi unya kung ang bata walay walay connection or dili siya possible so dili dito niya magamit again mo man jud siya ang mga ang mga uh, limit scenario oh so, dili man gud nato ma please ang tanan so pwede ta print module pwede pud tanan print so kita ang magdecide ana basta make sure na ang listening ug ang speaking listening gud na siya ug ang speaking speaking gud na siya so we will just um uh, devs mom devs, mom devs we will just put put the link on the module yes ma'am pwede na to ibutang if, if the sources are possible oh okay yes. if, if the sources are available yes. okay kung hindi available ang source pwede na to siya ikita mismo teacher ang mag video i post na to siya sa facebook unya ato siyang ihatag ang link and again pwede mo siya sa bata nga na mga net connections Okay, Mame. Mame, yes, yes, sir, man. Uh, yes, sir, man. Yes. Okay, na. Okay, na, ma'am. Okay, okay, sige. Uh, do I have to say, ang sana ako na? Ah, di, ma'am, napay question na? isa. Uh, ma'am, one question oh, okay. from Ma'am Donna. One Christine. last, one last. Uh, uh, ma'am Donna asks, we have specific content standards for each grade level. Philippine literature for grade 7, Afro-Asian literature for grade 8, Anglo-American literature for grade 9 and world literature for grade 10. Are we going to anchor our activities on these standards? Should stories, scenarios, pictures in the module be related solely in the specific content standard per level? Ma'am Devs. Okay. Mag-anchor yun ta dito, sir, especially sa ato ang literature. But again, Daghan ba yung nag-activities niya, yeah, sir? Gina-encourage yun ang stage, key stage 3 and key stage 4 na magamit ang mga parallel text and other informative text. Okay, thank you, ma'am. For, for those questions not yet pop up, you can still ask questions sa ating GC and anybody from our resource speakers can answer that questions. Can I question kay ma'am just ah, meron pa. Okay, ma Can we ask help for the illustration from outside? Pwede ma'am. Diba sir? Pwede. Oh, pwede. Okay, uh -huh. okay um, Jane, Jane. Yes, Excuse me. 
Um, for those who will be asking for illustration from the outside, diba, uh, we have already finalized our memo and you have seen the names of the illustrators there. Diba? Oh, yes, so basically, if they're going to get um, help from other illustrators, those names will not be printed sa memo. So ano na lang, I, I would suggest that they give the names sa GC. For example, si Mamsa, yes. she will be able to find somebody from their school who can illustrate. Then give the names to me so I could give an addendum. Write an addendum in the memo to recognize also the illustrator. And then, of course, you put the names of the illustrators there in your specific module that you are Pero writing. If, you acknowledge. It's not, uh -uh. From, it's not from DepEd, ma'am. Okay, lagi hapon. Ah, okay. Not from DepEd. And, um, okay lang siya, but then, uh, ikaw mag-pay na. Okay? Depe doesn't have the budget for that, di ba? Personal man ni mo, pero acknowledge ko na ni mo siya. Okay. Okay. Sige, sige. Uh, last question, ma'am, from Ma'am Jacqueline Balakinto. Uh, so, this means at the end of the module, we will provide our learners with options on how they will deliver the speech Face to face, online, or others. Parang nasagot ni Ma'am Debbie. Nasagot nata. Is it necessary a thematic module, Ma'am Debs? Ah, uh, unsa ka thematic ang ihang module sir related sa science? Gitim gitim niya sa science, ma? Sa English yung siguro ni Ma'am Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Wala yung problema oh. ang thematic basta kay ma-achieve niya ang learning competence. Oh, yes ma'am. Oh. Sir, naday ko'y concern sir for everybody. Oh, yes ma'am. Ang file name, dili siguro apelyedo atong ibutang ha. Dapat English 6 tapos title sa module. Ayaw tong mga pangalan kay lisod ka ay at we need to open the module to be, to be able to know what is inside the module. Oh, pati siguro po quarter ma'am no. Yes, Quarter sir. one, oh, learning competency number. English 6, for example, uh -oh. English 6, Q1, idiomatic expression. Para uh -oh. kung ang makareceive ka, kahibalo din siya nga, unsan nga module all about feeling, siguro pangalan. What do you think, Ma'am May Ann? Ma'am Debs? Yes. Mitch here. Ayos, Ma'am May Ann. Currently, I'm checking a module in the region. So, ang ginabuhat nila... I evaluating rather uh, Q1, then English 3, milk, milk number, what number? Nana ilang ginasend sa atua. Tapos title sa module. Wala na nila butang yung title. Milk number na lang. Basta ang Mitch, can you, can you give us a sample, Mitch? Hello, Mitch. Yes, ma'am. I post lang diha kung how it is done sa chat box okay. or sa GC. Uh -oh. Okay. Lama Thanks. Sa okay. I think all questions are answered. Again, you can still ask questions. Uh, all you need to do is to type your questions sa ating group chat. At this time, Ma'am Humuwad will give okay, her sir, word. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being with all of you today. Thank you very much for being here and for taking the time to patiently listen to what all our presenters had to say. But before we end, Mitch, are you there? Oh, okay. Mitch is preparing now this, this slide. Okay. But before we end, I would like to present the schedule for your English module right shop. Please present the, the slide, Mitch. Next slide. Okay. Now you see. No, no. The first, okay, that one. Now you see on your screen the schedule for the English module right shop. In this case, the validators will have to have a personal GC with his or her, her own validators, uh, writers. Okay, take note that every writer has their own assigned evaluators. Please look into the list of writers presented by Jane. Jane Hibolingo posted at the GC or the division memorandum that I have posted in, in the GC yesterday for clarification. I have posted, oh uh, yeah, the, the validators will have to evaluate the work of the writers and return it back for application of corrections. I think it would be better if the writers will make first the planning worksheet that was introduced by Mom Dems a while ago. Then submit the planning worksheet to the evaluators for comments and approval. 
Then writers will start writing the module guided by the planning worksheet approved by the validators. This time, writers will now submit the modules to the validator. Then validators will submit directly to the division con consolidator. So validators and um, writers may have your own agreement depending on what works best for you. Just see to it that you beat the deadline. The division consolidator for for secondary is Jane Helbolingo. So um, Jane will just post her email add in the GC for the submission of yes. those um, modules. Okay. Then Sir Mel, Sir yes, Mel Melanio Florino will be our official publisher and distributor of the modules to the field. So this time, let me read to you the schedule for the write shop. Please take note of this. Okay, for first quarter module write shop, that would be on June 7, 1 to 7, uh, for seven days. Submission to validator, June 8, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator will be on June 30, Tuesday. For second quarter module write shop, that would be June 8 to 14. Submission to validators will be June 15, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator is July 31, Friday. For third quarter module write shop, it will be on June 15 to 21. And submission to validators will be on June 22, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator is August 31, Monday. Fourth quarter module write shop will be on June 22 to 28. Submission to validators will be June 29, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator will be on September 30. Wednesday. So we have, as you notice, now we have given an ample time for validators for the validation process because it is taking so much time. Ang haba. There will be three processes, kasi de ba? So it was as what was presented a while ago. Three processes, talaga. Three evaluation evaluation tools will be used for the for the validation. So madugo siya and mahaba habang usapan siya. Mamey an. Okay. So yes, ma'am Devs. Ah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Ah, nade kui kaning concern sa kanagitan ng gani sa evaluator. Um, sir, may uh -huh. pagdumi mo himo an o process like version one, version two, and the final version. Kay, uh, this is experience gud namo ni siya sa LR mamana. Kapila na namo mm -hmm. version one, two, three, yes, four. Yes. Kapil kay ang nagawa kay ang first version, ang zero version, version. one. <laughs> <laughs> I just go oh, disaster na. Sila sir, sir. Uh, sila sir, ang mere ani na yes. pandemic. Yes. Ang mere version is lahi. Yes. Uh, eh, oo. Yes. Madugo siya. Uh, oo. Sige, sir, sige. Yes. Yes, mere. Mutag yes, ang mere. From, from writer to validator, dili na din na siya ibalik sa writer for ibalik or somehow. Pag-agree na lang mo, Okay. Ani ah, di ba mag you will have your own GC man? Kaya nga. So, okay. Di ba ibalik pa man na sa inyo? Uh -huh. for... Yes. Okay. Sir Amina, sir, ay mamin. Yes, ma'am Dex. Ano, siguro sir. Go, go. Yes, ma'am Dex. Gikan sa writer, version 1, manggib na siya. Nig maabot sa to atong i-correct, sir, nyo, atong i-edit, ibalik na sa mm. writer. Inigbalik niya sa to a uh, version. Atong masabot na to siya nga version. Kay kung magsigi kung ang ato ang dili na tubutangan o version 1 version 2 basing ang atong gina edit ang zero version na pud to siya mahatong mahatag final kay sir Mel is version 2 nga naa na day tay version 4 okay oo okay yes obri obri yeah. obri wants to speak na hello Ma'am, na ang guidelines ko are hello, hello, ma'am, madungog, ma'am. Copy, copy. Hello. So, kanin mo mo, i-chat na lang. Copy ka, ma'am, ah. Copy si Aubrey. Bri, copy ka, Bri. Sulat na lang, Bri. Chat box. Chat box na lang. Yes, ma'am, Devs. Yes, ma'am, Devs. Yes, yes. Sir, Mel. Kagto na yung final. Yes. Kagto na, Jude. 
Pamuna gyud ng mga validators ang naga-hold sa key ana. Kami na ba ang mo-submit kay Sir Mel? Kay Mimi. Kamu gyud ang nag- Oo, oh, oh, kamu gyud. Oo, oh, oh. ang validator gyud ang mo-submit. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. ana gyud. Okay. Okay, okay. Ay, okay. So, okay na. Another okay thing, na ta sa schedule na ito. Kamu na. Oo. Another thing, yes. ma'am. Yes. Uh, Kanaganing gikan sa writer. Ni Agi na sa kamot sa illustrator. Dapat ni Agi na. Di ba mo Agi na na siya sa ano? Ma'am Devs, Ma'am Devs. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, 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 Di ba naatay planning worksheet no? Di ba i-submit man itong planning worksheet sa sa inyo has validators? Of course, that's the time mo agree na mo ka. Ah, pwede na ni nga drawing. Di ba mo anak na mo sa ipag-gona na isa. So, pagbalik ato, ang module ato, na na ito'y drawing. No, nag-abot sa inyo ha. Actually, ma'am sa... Oo. Yes, yes. Yes, Amir. In regards to the consistency of layout gan ni ma'am, Okay, kada competitor sa mga good, lahi-lahi na itong writers. Plus, yung pag-abot sa mga lahi-lahi ang layout. Mga fala na naman sa ninyo. From writer to illustrator, then illustrator to the validator or evaluator. Oo, ano, good. You will just agree among yourselves, Mir, being the validator, Mir, Mir. Di ba you have your personal GC, man, Mir? Oo, kamo na magsabot ana with your writers. Kamo nga mga valid. Oo. So mabuhat mo karon after this webinar, magather mo more validators, identify the names of your writers and make your own GC tas diha na mo magsabot on what will be your mode of kuan work on the system of this in this submission. Kamo na ang bahala ana, ha? Basta you stick to the deadline. Yes, yes. Yes po, ma'am Devs. Okay, itong kay Sir Amir. Sir, ang module dili mo adto kay Evaluator. Si Writer, magkatag lang sa instruction kay Ival... I mean, ang module dili mo adto kay Illustrator. Kali maghatag lang o instruction si Writer kung unsa ang drawing. Si Illustrator, mag-drawing lang na siya on his own. Magmahuman niya ang drawing o send niya kay writer si writer na ang cluster ana siya ang mojo okay. I think that's clear Ah so trabaho kya po ni on the on the clarify lang Yes sir So trabaho gihapon ni illustrate ani writer along with the other writers ang pag layout kay dapat consistent man ang layout nga gamito nila uh, sa kada year level or grade level, di ba? Yes, sir. Hmm. So, dili na mo agi kay illustrator. Dili so, na, sir. Daan, magsabot daan ng mga writers nga mauna na particular layout ang gamito nila para consistent ang ilang layout. Tama ba ko, Ma'am Debs? That is why, sir, katong gimension ni Ma'am Obrey ganina, dili dito na to usabon ang template. Kaya nga. Yes. So, mo, mo follow good sila sa template. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Insert, in case nga na mga insertions, uh, sila yung mga modifications nga buhaton, dapat uh, may balo na sila, Ana. Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, by the way, ang kanang layout naman, ang template naman kasi is already a layout. So, ang buhaton na lang ni ano, Ana, ni writer is i-plastar na lang na. Kung na-drawing, iagid nang i-post dito. Anyway, the layout is already there because the template is provided na. So, wala na kayo yung nahihirap. Okay. So, pwede na kung mo-proceed sa next slide. Last na ni. Mitch? Okay, ma'am. Okay. So, okay. I would like to inform everyone that the same set of writers will be the same people who will make the summative test. Okay, so I would like to reiterate there will be a summative test after the module is done. And we have prepared the schedule for summative test construction. So, of course, um, some of us here are new, diba? Mga first time writers. Uh, we have a lot of first time writers here. So, um, these people will also be the same people who will 
write the test, the, the summative test for the specific um, competency that was that's assigned to them. So before we proceed with the test construction, we still have to give another orientation or webinar for test construction, and that would fall on June 29th. Okay? And then we will use the same platform, Google Meet platform. So you will have the opportunity to be oriented, reoriented of the technicalities in test construction. So now let me read to you the, the schedule for test construction. For the first quarter test construction, we will have it on June 30 to July 3. Submission to validators will be July 4, Monday. Submission from validator to division coordinator will be July 11, Monday. Second quarter test construction will be on July 6 to 10. Submission to validators, July 11, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator will be on July 18, Monday. Third quarter test construction will be on July 13 to 17. Submission to validator will be on July 18, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator will be on July 25, Monday. And last is the fourth quarter test construction, which will fall on July 20 to 24. Submission to validators will be on July 25, Monday. Submission from validator to division consolidator will be on August 1, Monday. So, same setup, ha? same setup ang gagawin natin. Mama. Uh, in the world to in, in the test construction. Yes, yes. Are you yes. inviting by the yes, administrators sir, to observe the test construction? They love to join the webinar uh, now. Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Uh, it would be nice also that they will be involved here. But in the test construction, we do not need uh, do we still need illustrations there? Okay, Lamba. Yes. Then we can employ their help. Yes, ma yeah, we can employ their help naman during the test construction. Uh -oh. Yes, yes. We, we, we would love it. We would love to invite them. They are welcome to join. So, again, let me continue. The same setup will be with, with Mojo Rare Shop. We will have the same process. It, it will be the same. Validators will have to have a personal GC with his or her own set of test developers. And the validators will have to evaluate the work of the test developers and return it back for application of corrections. Then the test developers will return back the corrected documents to the validator. Then validators will submit directly to the division consolidator. Again, our division consolidator for, for secondary is Jane Hill Bolingo. And the in charge for the publication and distribution of the test construction material to the field is Sir Melania Florino. So, do you have any more questions? Uh, anyway, questions and clarifications will be posted in the GC, ha? Kasi we don't have time anymore. So, I think that will conclude today's webinar. Ma'am, photo op mo na, ma'am. Do you have more announcement, Pastor Mel? Ma'am, photo op mo na. Sige, go, go, go. Uh, uh, turn up your sharing, ma'am. Then, may ask everybody to turn on your... Turn on your camera. <laughs> Nadrapo. <laughs> I will not turn on my camera. Hey, Jane, you print. Jane, print screen. Dili ko Camera lang. Gamay lang man makita sa kwa, sir. Limara ka buo. Tulura gani ako. Atin sa rito. I see, ma'am. He's a good picture. Nanaon siya na. Hindi ko kabalo. Ma'am, dead na lang nakita sa ako ang screen. Hindi sa di haang pwede. I-tiled na, sir. Si Aristin kaya? Naka-tiled na. Oo, nainig. Dapat i-tiled na. Ay, ma-offer. Who would like to, ano? Hindi sa side na. Ano, sir? Hindi sa ako pwede. Sir Mel. Ah, si sir. Ah, si sir daw. Si sir, si sir. Si sir Francis. Si sir Francis, oh. Sir Francis? Yes po, ma'am. Justine, pwede okay, na ka? Pwede po. O, dagan na kayo nag-print screen. Sige, do, do it daw. Say, ano po para marami ang people? <laughs> Say cheese. Ready, one, two, three, smile. <laughs> smile! <laughs> okay na? Wala ka naka-smile, Tin? Okay na. Okay na, Sir Francis. 
Sir Francis, okay na. Paki-post lang sa GC ha ang picture. Isa pa po ma'am. Wait, Sir Francis pala is from elementary. Si Sir Francis is from elementary. So I'd like to acknowledge him. Thank you okay, po. Please, please. Isa pa daw ma'am. Okay, one more, one more, one more, please. Okay, I'll count. Smile, one, two, three. Smile. <laughs> okay na. Okay na, ma'am. Okay na? Nainipiyong, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, so. Ay, nainipiyong daw. Nainipiyong. Kaya naman ako na, oi. Pag-save, pag-save po daw. Oh, sige, one last na daw, good. One, two, three. Sige. Okay. Smile kayo si Maestro. Okay, thank you, Sir Francis. So, I... Okay, thank you very much. That will conclude today's webinar. Thank you all to our presenters for your expertise and thanks to all of you for joining us. May we have a very fruitful and productive English module write up after this webinar. See you soon, everyone, and may God bless us all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, teachers. Bye. Bye, thank you.